Oh, hello, everyone. I mean, just a moment here. A lot of people stopping by already. What's up, guys? It's me, it's Joseph, and Silent Joker, Big Country, Zanian, Deathshot, uh, Jim Homeward, a bunch of y'all. What's up, everybody? Yes, it is time. Some guy, I'll get you on here in just a second. We are going to have a guest today, more or less. I'm going to have someone help me attack, well, dissect, not attack, but dissect Mayo's Trepang review, because they've played through the game quite extensively. I was going to have Krillix on here too, but sadly our boy is busy. He is working, getting, getting that bag. He's on the grind. Also, y'all can let me know if the music's too loud or what have you. I'll double check that real quick myself, but let me know. Does not seem to be. Does not seem to be. What's up, Drag? What's up, everybody? Hello, say hello. How are we all doing? Let me switch the screen over to chillin'. And let me go to the correct thing and undeafen our boy. Hello. Well, hello there. Alright chat, y'all can let me know how well you can hear him too. He should be showing up fine. Speak again for me real quick just so I can see you on OBS. Check, check. How's everyone going, chat? Okay, I will turn that up a bit and I'll just turn the music down some. We don't really need the music going anyway for his video, so... Make sure you're loud enough for everybody. That's oh, what's important. shot, I see you down in the chat. If I were to rate his video, judging by how he judges the game, its mechanics, how he plays it, I'd honestly rate it a 4 out of 10. He does not play Trepang Squared like it's supposed to be played. Or Trepang 2, however you want to say it. Yeah, technically it's squared, but... There's a, it is technically squared. There's a dumb let's argument be, about that. Let's not, be, let's not be the title police today, shall I know, it's, not, it's a dumb argument. But yeah, um, but it's not just his video. It isn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't make the game look that good. I mean, it's hard to make Trepang 2 look bad. It still looks really fun. But he doesn't do it justice, if that makes sense. He plays it how you would play a... COD type game, slow, methodical. Sure, you can go fast, but he doesn't do its full potential. Yeah, he's... he doesn't actually play the game as the developers would say it's intended to be—a fast-paced fear look-alike. Yeah, and as we get into this, you'll see how he misrepresents a lot of like aspects of the game. A zombie fan, hey zombie fan, what's up? I just saw you. How's it going, zombie fan? The music is too quiet, if anything. I didn't want it to be too loud like last time, so I'd, I figured having it be a little quieter is fine. It doesn't need to be ass-blasting loud. Well, Jacob, I am unfortunately proud to say that he does play it like Doom Eternal, which is not how you're supposed to play Trepang Squared. I'm you Kermitable Foe from the... To... Yeah, I remember your name. I, I remember Kermitable Foe. Ooh. Hello. I remember you, yes. I would say it's more of a fear-inspired game, Deathshot, not a remake. It takes a lot of aspects from fear's story, sort of like a extraterrestrial, superhuman sort of role, as your character would be. But I would say it's more of a really fast-paced game. Let's see. This is why not I this is why I got some guy game. on here for me. I was gonna have Krillix too, because they've both played through the game quite extensively. Krillix has beaten the game. I am one level away from beating the game. Both of us likely combined have about 35 or more hours. I have yet to actually play it. I've seen them both play it a lot, though. Enough to know where Mayo was, you know, bullshitting here and there. These guys helped point out a lot more of that, but... As there's some says in the chat... There's some shit that's just blatantly, pain. like, a lie. And yeah, go playing Japan, as Nier says in chat, is kind of like a, an odd dance. You can't play it like Ultra Kill, but you can't play it like a normal FPS either. You need to think about when you play it, because there's certain aspects of the game's mechanics that allow you to be really stealthy and kind of upfront in enemies' faces, in a way. Taking hostages and such. So I was trying to, is it worth the money? I haven't picked it up yet myself. It is on my wish list, though. I think it's for, like, what is it, like the 30 or 40 bucks that it is right now? It's pretty worth it. dollars it is, it is worth it. It's a very fun game that actually has a lot of replayability. Including cheats you unlock if you beat the It game. looks like it's got a lot of polish, too, so for it being the price that it is, you're getting, like, a basically AAA quality game in that regard. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, say it's worth yes. the money. I would say it's innovative. 
mainly for the factor of it combines a good story with a very fast movement shooter. I don't like, like it. Actually, you don't need to listen to the story if you don't want to, but it's there and it's a very good story. I don't like how instead of giving a good take, he uses someone else's video instead of uh, caring enough to give an opinion. Mayo Man is myth. <laughs> Riveting commentary. I know. Yeah, he's his commentary is always very monotone, and uh, he never seems to actually care about the videos he makes. He never seems to put a lot of effort into how he voices, how he feels about them. It's like he reads off a list. Yeah, it's. That's just Mayo's reviews. I've got my issues with him. Deathshot, if I'm going to be give you a perfect answer, I think it's uh, Indie Game of the Year potential. Definitely could be. Like I said, I think it's got a lot of the qualities of a AAA game from everything I've seen. It's really yeah, it's good. Got, it got, it's got graphics of like a AAA company would put out. It looks great for what it for the small team that made it. Oh, hey, hey, Road Breach. How's it going, Road Breach? Anyways, with that all out of the way, how about we actually dive right into this fantastic yeah. Trapang 2 review. I can't wait to see how he doesn't get the point of the game. The confused design of Trapang 2, guys. It's very confusing. Let's see how confusing it like really is. Out. Yeah. I'd also like to point out, Psycho, before we deep dive into this, I want you all to think about this from the perspective of him. He played the beta three years ago and helped support the developers early on. <laughs> and he thinks that the game is not up to what he wanted it to be. So I don't know what he wanted it to be. I don't Quite know what probably. he wanted it to be either, then. That's even more confusing. Yep, that adds a whole new layer to about what we're all about to see. So yeah. How about we go in, Psycho? Yeah, let's dive right into this garbage. Good oh boy. Trepang 2 is a game I have a lot to say about. Fear, the game is... Oh, that's right, I should share my screen for you. I am retarded. You should, in fact, do that. I am retarded. I'll, I have to test the sound for it anyway, so it's fine. Understandable. But yeah, I have to check the sound Largely of it anyway. based on is one of my all-time favorites. I have be been okay. anxiously awaiting the release of Trapang 2 ever since the I first demo, you, which I did not play. Uh, Turbo Overkill is a good game of the year contender for indie titles. All right, so you watching this? Get on in here. Yeah, let me see what we're working with. Oh boy. This is biased with think Turbo. Yeah, Turbo Overkill is a. Yeah. I haven't played it yet, but I've seen Nier play that a lot. It does look I've fun. seen a lot of my friends play it. I've not played it, but it looks great. I only just recently picked up Get to the Orange Door on Summer Sale as well. Yeah, they're putting a lot of effort into GTTOD as well. But I'm yeah. in their supporters chat. I see all they do. But yeah, let's actually dive into this now. Should be able to hear it just fine. I had to check the audio of it. Seems good on my end. Trepang 2 is else. a game I have a lot to say about. Fear, the game it's largely based on, is one of my all-time favorites. I've been anxiously okay. awaiting the release of Trepang 2 ever since the first demo, which I did not play. I saw it, immediately knew it was right up my alley, and decided to wait until it came out. I'm glad I did. So he played the demo, right? <laughs> he did play the first demo. <laughs> so it's that like... is kind of a lie, because he did a video on the first demo. So I don't... Either that, or he just reviewed the footage. Either way, he knew what Trepang 2 was. Well, it, he knew what they were trying to do with said game. You should have an, an idea of what you're getting into at that point anyway. Yeah, they do claim it is fear-inspired, but it is not a fear-like. Fear-like would mean that it would be slower, more methodical. They knew what they were doing with this game. It definitely looks like it. Everything I've seen, it looks That's really fun. That's the point. It's supposed to look like fear. It's supposed to really look well, like fear. I don't fear. just mean it looks like fear. I mean, it looks like they, they, you know, they were pretty uh, methodical with everything they were planning oh, out they for. Oh, they were. They were because the initial joy of returning to Fear's combat does a lot for this game. If I had already spoiled it by playing the demo, I think I would be less satisfied with it. Because I am kinda unsatisfied. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but still a game I ultimately enjoyed and would recommend. The combat is really good, the guns feel amazing, the effects and graphics and gore are impressive. It's So, you know, I can agree with him here. I would I, I would I would that. I would still recommend this game. It's just yeah, some of the points he. Game, even it was a little problem. It's just some of the points he brings up for why he, you know, says this game's underwhelming or whatever the fuck. Why he's underwhelmed by it, don't really make a lot of sense as we get into it. But everything. I agree with Mayo here wholeheartedly. All of the stuff that he's listed so far, as he said, is what makes this game good. But there's some gripes I have with a little bit of the finer details. Yeah, it's just you know, praise where it's due because he's actually saying it's a good yeah. game still. So. I'll yeah, agree with him, and it, it does look like a I, fun game. I'll give you a pat on the back for that, Mayo. 
It's great. I'm not going to get into that stuff too much here, though. Instead, I want to talk about the core mechanics of Trepang 2 and how great they are when they work and how not great they are when they don't. As I sometimes do, I'm just going to refer you to G-Man's review if you want a more general look at the game. <laughs> so just just says to go look at someone else's review entirely because he can't do it himself. What I also like to point out is that G-Man in that review kind of just... I, there, I agree with him mostly, but there's one thing I don't agree with him on. He criticized the soundtrack, saying it's kind of mediocre. Oh, and I, you've heard a few of the songs. Like I've heard like some of the... Yeah, I've heard, you, I've heard it when you guys are playing it. That shit fucking bangs. Yeah, it goes off. <laughs> it goes off. I don't know how you could say that shit isn't good. For, for anyone in chat who wants to listen to the Trepang 2 soundtrack, it's free. It's on YouTube. They, the developers uploaded it. Go listen to the hour and, like, 20 minutes of it. It is great. Yeah, Trepang 2's got some bangers. Like, fuck. Another fun little fact, if you care about lore and story and games, the first song of that soundtrack ties into every other song. Just listen carefully. Yes, Drag, it is very freaking good. I agree. <laughs> Man, I love this game didn't appeal to my every whim. Time to make a 10-minute video being entitled. That is his career in a nutshell. Oh, boy. Covers combat, weapons, levels, music, story, interactivity. It's a good review. If that's what you're looking for, that's the video to watch. Here, we're going to dig into some specifics that I think hold this game back. So, in other words, Mayoism, in translation Mayo for that, would... it to be more up his alley instead <laughs> of what the people designing the game were going for. Yeah, translation, Mayo's going to nitpick this game for what it isn't that he wants it to be. I'm going to let you all now know in the chat, some of the things he brings up would outright hurt the game. Is Trepang 2 on sale right now? Not on Steam. Um, it is it only came like... came out about one week ago, it, so no. Yeah, it is only like 30 or 40 bucks, though, like normal priced. It's like almost, it's just shy of 40 Canadian for me, I know, it's, so it's like 30-something for you. USD. I do not compare Doom Eternal or Trepang 2 Deathshot, they are very separate games. That play very differently. You love you love a soundtrack with quality. Well, fuck, you'll probably like if you if you like anything about say like Madness's soundtrack or uh, Doom soundtrack, you'll probably like Trepang's. Very that, much. At so. least the, at least that's you know, I don't that's all I can really think to compare it to on the fly right now. Not that it's exactly the same as those, but it gives me some similar vibes, and I really like. It has I don't know, it's just got a lot of energy to, to it. Yeah, it really it tries to get you in the mood for what you're doing in this game. Yeah. Very befitting for the game. With six difficulty settings available, I went with number four. Very hard, just to feel it out. Okay, now I know you... I know you said Me you might Krillix. die on this hill. Krillix said he might not, but I'll let you speak here. It depends. Here. It depends. I feel like he is lying about this. I feel like he only played on hard. Reason for this being, the way he plays Trepang Squared... He would die constantly in levels. The enemies would just outright tap him from anywhere. There would be no way to survive the way he plays the game. It would not work. No, I don't really have much of a say on that. Um, it's like playing Ultra Kill when you don't want to use your movement abilities to your advantage. Yeah, I get that. That's I, how you describe. That's how I can only describe it. I just I don't have much say because I haven't played the game yet, and I know Krillix said that he's a little uncertain too, but he doesn't know if he's gonna like die on that. I think there's some hill. levels where he did play very hard on. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he played the entire game on very hard. Yeah, there are just, certain levels with his playstyle that would outright kill you. Constantly. He, he could have went and just grabbed some random B roll on like the uh, fucking more normal difficulty or whatever. Exactly. Uh, I had a comment I that like I think you should show. see. They made really, Hang on, I'll look for a road breach. Even if someone can re review something better than me, I would still try my best to do it myself. Yeah. He's pretty much just pointing to someone else because it's like... I can, I can see his point on why he wouldn't want to just repeat the same shit that someone uh, else has said. Because that's the same reason I didn't make my original Anna Waifu video is because it's like, this is already a dead horse. What more am I going to say that how does, hasn't already been said? But if that's the case, either don't make the video or commit fully and just say what you're going to say. But this little in-between of just nitpicking bullshit, it's just very weird. I don't understand him. Hello, Ah. Uh. How's it going, Infinite? How's the Goofy Goober Mayo? He is, um, he's very Mayo-y. He's, um, very, very spoiled Mayo, I'm gonna give him that. Also, what's up? My name is Wolf. Yeah, I'm trying to read chat, but we're also... I'm, I'm autistic as fuck, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> we both are. 
You can actually pick a difficulty before starting each mission, which is quite nice. Disappointingly, there is no information on what difficulty settings affect. Do you take more damage? Are enemies spongier? Are there fewer resources? Is the AI smarter or more aggressive? Do your powers so, burn out So, let's resources? roll back here. There is this little summary here, which... 9 times out of 10, like most fucking first-person shooter games, when you're selecting a difficulty, all they really do is give you a little summary like they this. They don't tell you what exactly has changed. They don't tell you the stats of like every but single from thing. from what I've played from every single difficulty, it's basically the same thing with every other FPS. You take more damage, enemies take more damage. You both die much faster. However, the only real difference being rage mode and extreme mode, enemies will practically see through anything you do, i.e. cloaking or trying to hold a hostage as an enemy. They will immediately open fire on you no matter what you do. It's more of a matter of keeping on your toes and making sure you're stuck on ammo. And defensive him, you only... Unless you get in a only... firefight and die. And defensive him, he only focuses on gameplay. Even then, it's not what he focuses on, it's just how he does it. But, yeah. I don't get this nitpick here. This is just, like, if I go boot up any Halo game or fucking Gears of War or some shit... They let they're... you know how hard a, a difficulty will be by telling you that you will die a lot. Yeah. And they mean it. But they don't... There is literally a waiver with Rage Mode that says... We do not recommend you play this mode unless you have 50 hours on this game. But they don't tell you explicitly everything that changes, and that's what I mean. I can go boot up any other old shooter like Gears or Halo or some shit. It, the difficulties are just going to have a brief summary of what what it entails. It, they won't tell you what exactly they changed. That's the point of it. Exactly. So, to see how you feel. Is the AI smarter or more aggressive? Do your powers burn out quicker? Who knows, and I'm not going to play on a bunch of different difficulties and spend hours making measurements. I'll just say for me, a are. moderately skilled FPS veteran and a fan of fear, Very Hard was for the most part a solid combat experience, with a few significant difficulty spikes that really had me paying attention and mastering okay. my tools, and dying a lot. You have the classic fear reflex ability, here called Focus, and it's yeah. the star of the game. Slow down time to take out a group of bad guys, use it to avoid damage, or just toggle it quickly to get one guy and save the rest for later. You also have a cloaking ability, which turns out to be much more important than I expected. It's great for escaping imminent- So why would you not expect a cloaking ability to be useful to begin with? This is with? the second thing you ever get to use in the entire game. I of would... course it is very important, Mayo. It's like he's willing to disregard something in the sandbox without actually testing it first. This ability right here changes how enemies fight you. You can cloak, and they will actively throw flares to try and locate you. And you can grab someone in cloak and then make a hostage situation where the enemy will have to deliberate how to take care of you. Yeah, that seems like the most useful one to me is like using it to take hostages because that help that would help you bounce around the arena a lot more too. The moment you walk into an arena and you take and you grab the first enemy you see, the enemies will not fire on you unless you fire the first shot, meaning you can plan a way to kill everyone around you easily. Yeah, it I don't understand why he was so it plus, you know, a cloak in a video game even without the other mechanics like hostages ho like grabbing hostages and shit like that. Why would you just disregard that its importance? It's like literally a the little get out of jail free card. You can sneak around five or six enemies with this cloak during the first two minutes. It's like a little get out of jail free card. So what the fuck? I agree. When uh, has a game ever been descriptive on how uh, the game changes between difficulties? Maybe Dusk, but that's about it. Yeah, Dusk is one of the few I can think of, but usually they're just a dumb little summary. I truly feel like Mayo just sets himself up for disappointment for every game he talks about. <laughs> It, he might have some good points here and there about some games. I'm not going to say he only has bad criticisms, but by and large, it's just like he finds dumb shit Mayo to nitpick. can have a good moment. He can. Just as anyone else on YouTube can. It's just that his good moments are surrounded by dog shit. Which is upsetting. I too have to finish Dusk, don't worry. But yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't understand why you wouldn't think that's useful from the get-go. I would see a cloak in a fucking FPS like that. My mind would probably shoot back to Halo 2, where I remember that was a little get-out-of-jail-free card when you were the Arbiter, and <laughs> you are about to die. I'm like, oh, this, this could exactly be useful. Which is exactly what you can use it for as well. The moment you pop the cloak, enemies will try and shoot in the direction they saw you, but you can bank off. So... It is a get-out-of-jail-free card. I don't know why you just... I don't know why you brushed that off. <laughs> 
to death so you can find some cover. Sneaking around someone to take a hostage which can cause enemies to hold their fire. Exactly. And a cloak is just a general useful method of avoiding damage. Your health regenerates, but only a sliver. I think that's fair for a game with so much chaos and no active healing mechanic like Fear had. There are health pickups around this. From what I know, that's just the heavy enemies that'll drop shit sometimes, isn't it? There are health pickups, but only in very specific rooms, like a giant arena or a boss room. Okay, yeah. They aren't truly everywhere. At most, you'll find one during a long hallway section. But yes, heavy enemies like Juggernauts do drop health packs. That would be kind of cool if uh, more games gave stats on what different, what's different with different difficulties. Yeah, I'm not... I do agree. I agree with I'm that. I'm not opposed to that. But I'm not opposed. He, he acts like it's a flaw with Trepang 2 when most shooters don't really do Trepang shit like 2 that. Trepang 2 lets itself be known that if you're playing on those higher difficulties, the moment you select hard, it says recommended for very experienced FPS players. And the higher you go, it says you might need these amount of hours. Yeah, it lets you know that you're getting into very deep water. I yeah, I'm not against the idea, but he rep he represents Trepang Two is like is he represents it as it being a problem with Trepang Two, and it's like you can apply this to most FPS games. I thought that Mayo complained about Halo that he never cared about Halo series because it killed for FPS. He never said that he outright hated it. He was. The point of that video is very weird, and after knowing what his point was, I can understand why he made that first video on Halo Combat Evolved. Not that I agree with it, I still think there's a lot of shit points in it and he contradicts himself. But he wasn't trying to say he hated Halo, he was just trying to say how it changed a lot of first person shooters from then on, and his problems with the industry. I agree with you, Golden Apples. The enemy dialogue and combat are the highlight of this game. Wholeheartedly, hearing the enemies call out, cover me, I'm moving, and then the others scrambling and screaming as they try and find you. It is the funniest thing. That is funny. Is Trepang 2 pro protag a Giga Chad? Yes. From everything I've seen, 106 is pretty fucking... pretty pretty cool guy. <laughs> it's pretty badass. Also, hey, person, man, guy. Dragon. I wholly agree with you. Oh, we got person, man, guy. A fellow guy in the chat. Yes. Cloaking really is your ticket out of a bad situation when everyone is ganging up on you and spraying machine guns in your general direction from a distance. I lost count of how many times I got locked down under suppressing fire. Now, okay, it's not a bad point he made there where it is a little get out of jail free card. So I have to ask again why you would disregard it to begin with if exactly without trying that, it. You can, it literally shows you up front, you can use this to go past an entire group of enemies. And then another thing Heck, is... if they spot you, you can just run away. And another thing... Even notice you. Another thing is right here in his B-roll. Everyone is ganging up on you and I don't know what he... Like, he just uses it to distance. walk behind cover and then walk behind more cover. He didn't really do if anything of value with it. <laughs> if I was in a situation, I would wait for my stamina to fill up, immediately activate focus and cloak, go through the courtyard and kill everyone on the other side. It's literally that fast. Maybe grab the first person you see as a hostage and toss them yeah, in as a grenade. Grab, not even just that. Just grab them, You hit the G button, fling them in as a grenade, yep. boom. Like, three down. I've seen you guys play this game enough to like have an idea of, like, this is just a dumb way to use cloak right now. <laughs> it just looks it stupid. It is a literal, like, it is god mode, essentially. You can <laughs> use it and kill anyone around you. It's pretty much just wasting no it here, be, though. Be the wiser. Um, you know if Trepang 2 is so good, then why isn't there a Trepang 22? <laughs> why isn't there a Trepang oh 1? God. Where's Trepang hey, 1? Hey, buddy. Hey, look. Trepang 1, that's in the, that's in the, uh... Is it like 106 where it had to go through different staging and, or, like, yeah, different tests they, until yeah, they got the, <laughs> the working yeah. one? Yeah, there was, there was Trepang 1, there was Trepang 2, there was Trepang 3. We're on Trepang Squared, so mm -hmm. we're somewhere. <laughs> down under suppressing fire and it felt like I couldn't move. Cloaking for just a second Hang or two on. to change position. Stuck under suppressing fire and couldn't move. How? You have slide, focus, cloak. You can just vanish. Let me hear it. Let's, let's, let's roll it. Around. Let's just roll it back again real quick. I lost that count of how many times I got locked down under suppressing fire and it felt like I couldn't move. Cloaking for just a second or two to change positions became incredibly important. Just to change positions, you can use it to entirely shift the leverage of the arena. You can change the battlefield with that, not just change positions. You can run up behind some of the guys firing at you, grab one of their buddies, and then light them up with an incendiary shotgun. 
He's acting like all having a human shield. It's acting like all you can do is run from is like run to and from cover with cloak. Deathshot, to answer your question, the AI isn't stupid. In fact, they will use tactics to try and outflank you. He has so much movement tech. He has, he has just a lot of options that he's refusing to like engage with. The funny thing about this is, him saying that, when you can just melee an enemy, and instantly you get a secondary stamina bar, makes the cloak even more dangerous. Wait, what about Far Cry 2? In Far Cry 2, the enemies scream bloody murder in the later half of the game because you're a demon who will kill everything that breathes oxygen. <laughs> yeah, the enemies kind of act like that too in this room, I see. They just, they fear the fuck at you. They know you're a superhuman and they know they are no match for you, but they're going to give it their all. Oh, uh, this and fucking... They, they do. This, this game. I've seen some of this shit. It's funny. So these are your two abilities, but they do not recharge in the same way. Cloaking regens automatically and fairly quickly. You'll almost always have a few seconds of cloak ready to go at any moment, and thank god. But the focus bar is recharged manually, which is a huge change from how fear did it. The reflexibility okay. and fear recharged over time, which is a contributing factor in it breaking the balance. Fear is actually a much more fun game to replay without slow-mo because of that. And in Trepan- That's subjective. Thing two, Very you could just hide for a bit or run around in circles until you had more focus, this game would easily fall apart. Fortunately, focus only recharges by attacking enemies. With a few kills that, under your belt- point. Yeah, that is the point. He's that is the point. You, ne you need to kill enemies to rebuild focus, but not only just focus, stamina. Yeah, well, that he is kind of praising this part of it, to be fair. True, true. He's not, he's not trying to like- But he's missing that. the point of why it exists you'll restore a bit of focus. Use it for a quick slow-mo tactic, or keep killing to charge up a lot and then unleash an all-out slow-mo assault on everyone in the room. It's a wonderful change that holds the player accountable and rewards Which offense and smart tactical decisions. Yeah, see, this I will actually agree with him with. It's just... He acts like... I had. I know I had a point later on in this video. I, if See if I can remember it when it comes up, where what he says here kind of comes back to bite him making. I'm very happy with it. ...and rewards offense and smart tactical decision making. Yeah, the smart tactical decision making. So, in other words, he likes it when a game pushes him into its systems through challenge. Because he's Which challenged is... to use smart decision making. But, later on in this video, I remember there was some shit he was saying and talking about. Or this kind of came back to bite him. Oh, man. Uh, without the focus uh... mechanic, fear would be... Obscenely difficult. Yeah, that's why I also said subjective on whether or not you want to replay it with that. That's stupid. Without it, that's kind of handicapping yourself. I'm very happy with it. However, I'm far less happy with the stamina system because I feel it's confused. Here we go. I'm not against the game having stamina. I do love the idea of killing enemies giving you a stamina boost. So if you're always in the action, you're never out of stamina. Super cool mechanic. But there's two things that are just killing me. I do have to say, this is more so just a nitpick of me on Mayo. I will admit that first, but this just further reinforces my theory that he always, like, he engages more with games that are fucking fast-paced like that. Like, he needs them to hold his attention. Like, he's got fucking ADHD or something. He needs to constantly see the bright explosions and colors and the red coming out of the enemies. Yeah. I don't, I don't... It's like when a game slows down a little bit, for whatever reason... He somehow finds, again, like shot? he did with yes, Halo, he found an issue with. But yeah. First, there are plenty of sections where there's no combat. In the campaign level... Because this is an also story-driven game. It's trying to get you immersed in the world. The really fucked up world that this is. <laughs> I mean, the level you're running through right now, Mayo, there is a literal mass graveyard with, like, actual undead creatures roaming around that make you question... What were they doing to the people here? And not only that, five minutes before, you're running through a room called the Hall of Heroes, which is just a mass grave marker for everyone that gave their lives. <laughs> so, yes, the game is trying to get you immersed in the world to make you wonder, why is 106 here? That's sure, literally one of the first questions you. I had when you were playing the game first. Was, what the fuck is this guy? Why is he here? Yeah, exactly that. And if story's not up your alley, okay, then just run through it. Don't mind it. He never really does. Downtime. He never really does pay much mind to stories and games anyway. So when he does have a yeah, criticism so about just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. 
just take some downtime walking through, you know? Relax after going through a mass killing spree, you know? Horizon is literally SCP-2. Who? What? I don't know who Horizon is in this that context, is, Drag. Um, Horizon is the um, big company in the game, and that's kind of the meme that they oh, have oh, a lot of anomalies. Okay. Well, yeah, you he's, literally fight Mothman. He's not wrong game. there, then, yeah, because I've seen... Yeah, they, they are literally... They, you literally fight UFOs, and you go to the back rooms, you kill Mothman. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the point. There's a lot of anomalous things in this game. Is there any sexy like ghost it. lady like Fear 3? Not that I know of. There's creepy no, ghost no. lady. There, there's scary guy in Tank that kills you with Katana. Amazing. This which is your hub world. There's nothing to do here but run to the mission select screen and run back to the helicopter. And you awkwardly run out of stamina on the way. Maybe they could now, have made stamina. Now, this is the one thing we have a big with gripe with. Yeah, Watching just... Krillix's gameplay of him going through this area, it takes maybe less than two stamina bars to run through to the end. I just, he I is have... deliberately yeah. slowing yourself down. Let, let me just roll it back and run the B-roll again, because pay attention to his stamina bar here in the middle, guys, and you'll see he is literally just mashing the fucking shit out of it without actually letting it recharge, which it takes, like, 0.2 seconds for it to just fully you literally recharge. You stand still and it's fully recharged. You don't even have to stand still, you can just keep walking, and then you can, boom, sprint again, and you can do a sprint slide, sprint slide. And Krillix was even showing that if you time it right, by the time you hit the ground again, you have enough stamina back. It's just a little bit, but enough that you can do another I would also slide. Like to point out, he's not even sliding in the home base. Under he's not speeding up his way of getting out. Back to the but yeah, look at, look at the fucking bar here. Run out of he spams the shit out of it. Maybe they could have made stamina something you only deal with in combat scenarios. It reminds me of Nightmare of Decay, where they updated the game to remove stamina from areas you've already cleared to make backtrack. But there is no tedious. areas you've already cleared in this Going game. From... Well, I don't really care about his comparison there to that game because it's a pretty null point when you realize how he's just spamming the shit out of the stamina anyway. I exactly, don't really. I, it's not really a problem with the game or its pacing or the gameplay at all when you're just in this down. Like, you're in an area that's downtime. It's lull. You know. It's no combat or anything. You don't need the stamina to be infinitely regenerating anyways, like it is in combat, where you're rewarded for, you're not getting you know, shot at. Yeah, you're rewarded for killing more enemies, you get your stamina bonus, you keep going. That's kind of the point. Here, you're just walking around, and even then, the stamina regen is pretty fucking generous. If you're not a trog who's spamming the shit at a shift every .1 seconds, you can actually run to and from the mission select and the way out... And about two stamina bars. Krillix proved that to us literally last I, night. I don't know how to tell you this, Mayo, but you're lying about this to yourself. You are doing this to yourself now. This is so. This is oh, just yeah. an outright lie, and this is. I wasn't watching most of the video when they were playing it in VC the first time. Uh, I tuned in around like the three minute mark. I was somewhere around here between two forty and three minutes. And when we got to this point, this was my first major gripe. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you retarded? My god. My only problem with Trepang 2 is losing the kick when you run out of stamina, which is a nitpick. That's fair. I agree. I agree with that. That is a good nitpick, because I did not like running out of stamina and then not being able to melee. Did not help. Yeah, like I'm supposed to beat it with a big guy with katana. I mean, big guy with katana is there for a reason. I believe there actually is a reason for that in lore, Dr. Dragon. You can look it up. I know that they there's a lot of things they have. Pretty odd. Mayo literally did the slide during the combat, but when he was running through a stage, he doesn't. He was just running around, and he did do, like, one, but he just kept spamming the shit out of his sprint, so it was just... Which means he would never get any stamina he, back. He wasn't letting himself get enough stamina back to even really run to begin with. However, if he actually timed it right, Krillix also proved this last night, that you can slide jump and slide jump again at as soon as you land. You can just keep gaining speed. Well, it's not just that, it's not so much that, but it's like your stamina will come back enough for you to do another slide jump by the time you hit the ground from the last one. Oh, hey, Grav. Love you too, Hello, buddy. Grav. <laughs> Big ups to Grav, you a homie. Thanks for stopping by, my man. We're, we're reacting to some Mayoisms live here. Graf has sat through Mayo's Alien Isolation video with us in Discord VC once, so he's definitely got a lot to say about the guy. He thinks he's got some dumb reviews, too. Thank you, Grav. Because this is just some guy online. That's all he needs to be known I'm as. I'm just some guy. There's no need to call me anything else, because that's what I am. But that's that's who we are featuring today. He's played the game for a lot, and he's a, he's been a homie on, on the server for a little while now. So 
we'd ha we're having him on today to help him react to this dumb shit. And thank you, Psycho. It's really it's really driving up my blood pressure. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Look, it's, nothing will be better, and th we can pause for a little story time here. Nothing will be more funny to me than that same time we were watching Alien Isolation, or Mayo's Alien Isolation review with Grav, and you were there as well at one point, and you were telling your grandfather or your uncle, whichever it was. My uncle. Your uncle about uncle. it. He loves Alien. It's his favorite <laughs> franchise of all time. So he you, plays Alien Isolation regularly. You were telling him about this stupid review we were watching and some of the points I he made. I actively made him angry. <laughs> he made your freaking vet uncle angry. Uncle, my fucking uncle was mad at Under the Mayo's fuck ass video. <laughs> and you had to leave for me. five minutes to go talk to him. I left for him. five minutes because I brought I it up to him and the next thing I know when we're watching that video again, I get a phone call from my uncle. He's like, come upstairs and sit down. And he, <laughs> he brings out two fucking Bud Lights and he sits me down like, we need to talk. <laughs> we need Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this guy? How do I know to stay away from him? Is this he is... one of your friends online? <laughs> So yeah, no, that that nothing will be funnier to me than how we broke your fucking like war veteran uncle. We broke my fucking Gulf veteran uncle because fucking under the mayo was me <laughs> under the mayo broke my uncle. So yeah, I feel the like the navy didn't break him. I feel like under you, the mayo did. I feel like you can do some justice here for him. <laughs> it, it's funny in the sense that he fucking. It just breaks my mind that after all he's done, that's the thing that pissed him off the most when I've been around with him. <laughs> yeah. Him hey, criticizing Stunkle. that. Damn, is it that bad? It was pretty bad, Road Breach. As someone who's a big all, fan of look, the game and shit as well, it's bad. Com all I have to say is don't compare Alien Isolation to Prey. Yeah, that's Prey. an L. Still covering the Alien Isolation video? Uh, eh. Still covering that video? Yeah, I'm planning on it. I just slow and got other shit I'm working on. Yeah, but this, yeah, this guy Psycho, he's got plans. D detour aside, that was just a funny little story time about when we were watching that. So yeah, yeah back... that was a good story time. Back to the autism. Back to this autism, yes. Move stamina from areas you've already cleared to make backtrack <laughs> Get out there, just ask when we're gonna make a Going from actively podcast. managing stamina yes. in combat to constantly suffering from its limitations when not in combat is what makes the whole thing feel confused. And the second point... I don't get how that's confused, though. I don't get that how that's confused. It feels deliberate almost. In it is deliberate. You are doing it wrong. It you is deliberate the because you know, they, you know, you're supposed to suffer from stamina's limitations when not in combat because that's almost the penalty for when you are in combat, not killing anything is stamina. And if you weren't a troglodyte about it outside of combat, you could still make pretty good use of your stamina bar. And it's like what 0. 0.2 second regen time. At most, it's like not even a second. It's up again pretty quick if you're just patient. And by patient, I mean literally just wait a second or two. I agree, Silent Joker. It's confusing because it's not Doom Eternal. God damn it. We need more Doom Eternals in this world. True. ...is that there's a horrible, horrible bug where if you press left or right with the... Run this is not a bug, by the way. I'm going to roll this back. I want, I want you all to hear what he has to say here in full, like his whole breakdown of this. But just keep in mind, he thinks this is a bug. He thinks this is a bug, but I'm just gonna let this play. Come that on, there's everyone. A horrible, everyone in chat, try not to bug laugh. Where if you press left or right with the run key and then press forward, you don't run. I'll break this down a bit for you. You cannot strafe run, which is fine, but you can run forward into the side by pressing both a side direction and forward. If you press forward plus run and then left or right, you run diagonally. If you walk forward and then start walking diagonally and then press run, you run diagonally. If you walk to the side and then press forward and then press run, you run diagonally. But if you walk to the side and press run before pressing forward, the run command does not register. This also happens if you press run first and then move to the side and then press forward. In both situations, the run command is forgotten. That is not a bug. <laughs> There is no strafing, Mayo. There is no strafe running, you said it yourself. So when you are literally mis-inputting the, the actual commands to run forward and then diagonally, by trying to strafe run first in any regard, even if that's not your intention, of course the, the, the command's not going to work. The inputs aren't going to work the way you want to. This is like complaining about doing the wrong button combo in a fighting game and then bitching that it doesn't do what you wanted. 
this is entirely you just not understanding how the game wants to be played. That's that's not a not bug, by the way. This, this is your fault. That's not a this bug of the game fault. at all. <laughs> the most you could do is nitpick the fact that, hey, maybe the run command should be like a constant thing, so if I do start pressing W, then I start running forward diagonally. But it doesn't let me strafe run. That's the most you could nitpick there. But that's not a bug of the game. It just doesn't let you strafe run, so therefore you fucked up when you misinputted the commands like that. Thank you all for summarizing. My man just autistically broke down a bug that isn't even a bug. Yeah, it's not a bug. It's not a glitch. From Road Breach, I feel like you described the same thing four times. So do we, buddy. <laughs> we all so do. do. <laughs> you just, hey, dumbass. You just took what he said and, and phrased it differently. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, boy. Game's really fun, five though. Minutes in, it is a really fun game. I just don't understand. This is not a bug. <laughs> it's bugged as just a cope. It really it is. is. Oh, fuck. And you're left slowly walking diagonally, even though you're holding the run key. It leads to incredibly frustrating moments where you swear you're supposed to be running, but you aren't. Just because How did it take you, you that long to not realize you were not running? Which, by the way, That's my question. you were definitely in running in your B-roll you here. swear you're supposed to be running, but you aren't. Just because you were Yeah, but like him walking from server to server, how did it take you like three seconds to realize you are not running? How? Your gun sways. Your gun your gun does a completely different animation. Round before you started trying to run. Oh, don't get me wrong, death shot. This game I'd has say twenty percent of my deaths were caused by this bug. Twenty percent of his deaths were caused by a bug that wasn't even a bug, that's a problem he's nitpicking and reading into the game. So what you're trying to say, Mayo, is your and as I'll say this as calmly as I can, retarded. This is a skill issue. This is unironically a skill issue. You it's should a, get good. I wish I had BT here so he could play the freaking Joe Biden skill issue thing. <laughs> skill issue. Please, please, please fix this. How does something like this go unnoticed three years after the demo came out? This is not Maybe a bug. Maybe it's intentional. Maybe it's intentional, buddy. Maybe you should just input the commands correctly to run diagonally Maybe. and not just if try and straight run. Game, since the first beta, three years ago, maybe, and just hear me out, Mayo, it was designed that way. What a revolution. He can't comprehend that. Truly a that. revolution. He, his mind can't fathom that. I just, I don't, I don't. This isn't a bug. <laughs> the fact that this caused 20% of his deaths, I can't. How does a glaring eye oversight go through editing? I don't know. He acts like this is an actual point. So, on the topic of things feeling confused, I want to discuss the weapon carry number and the modification system. <laughs> Here we go. For a game so inspired by fear, and significantly ramping up the action and the number of enemies on screen, and the variety of enemy types, it's baffling to me that they would reduce the weapon number from 3 to 2. I simply do not understand this limitation. Three was a good number in fear. Oh boy. So three is a good number in fear, therefore games inspired by fear Look, should always have three. Buddy, two weapons in this game can level a map. Depending on if you keep getting ammo for them. The reason you can only have two is because if you had three, every level would be easy as hell. You could walk into a level with a grenade launcher, dual wield spaz 12s with incendiary rounds, and a minigun and just blaze your way through the level and be done with it. That, no. The game has a lot of flaws, but Mayo is not pointing them out. Am I surprised? No. It doesn't no. count for the fact that you can dual wield most weapons. Yeah, you can also dual wield a lot of weapons in this game, like shotguns, vector, assault rifle. rifles, and shit. You would just melt through everything with three weapons. Remember it's the Elden Ring weapons. stream? Yes, I remember the Elden Ring stream. Yeah, exactly, Dr. Dragon. The point of two weapons limit is to serve as a nerf to 106's capabilities. If you had three weapons, you would break the game actively. There would be nothing to stop you. And again, he's acting like just because Fear had three weapons, that and this game is inspired by Fear, that it should also have three weapons for some arbitrary reason outside of that. Get out there, yo, with three dollars. I appreciate that, or... Yeah, it's three something, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Does this guy ever release a W? Uh, he very rarely makes good points, but overall, I don't like his videos, so I 
I think I they'll... do agree, Road Breach. It would be fun, but it would also get rid of all, like, any sort of tension in the game. Well, when I you think... could kill any weapon, any character in the game. I think the last W, or you could say Mayo, I unironically had was, like, shitting on Redfall. That's about it. You could have a shotgun for close encounters, an assault rifle or SMG because they're fun, effective, and versatile, and then keep a pistol on you for emergencies, or a sniper rifle, or the penetrator. That's... Combat all- yeah. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm letting People him- I'm just immediately pick up the most bullshit weapons and be done with it. I'm just letting him describe his point here, but I don't agree because it pretty much just boils down to fear, let me do it, why can't this game? always felt very expressive because of the three Australian all right yeah I knew it was something I'm retarded though but I appreciate it nonetheless my man big ups nonetheless this in Trepang 2 only having two weapons severely impacted my enjoyment and experimentation I mean I'm not gonna put down this shotgun it's too good it's too fun so I can only pick up one other weapon from the other six or however many there are Okay, well, a shotgun and a DMR pretty much cover my every need, but man, if I could just hold one more weapon, I would at least pull it out here and there out of a sense of curiosity and improvisation. So what's stopping you from doing that anyway? You're limiting yourself by not wanting to drop the shotgun. You are the one giving this limitation to yourself, not the game. You're pretty much just you making the game harder. You can drop that DMR. You can drop that DMR, buddy. It's not that hard. Drop that DMR and grab that pistol from that guy over there, you know? By him saying a game that is so inspired by fear, he just admitted that he just wanted fear remake. Pretty much. I wouldn't go as far as saying he wanted a fear remake, but he's acting like this game I should agree, have just Dr. done Dragon. everything the same. I agree. The DMR is by and far the worst weapon in Japan 2. It's got too little ammo in reserve. You would, you would only clear about three rooms and be done with it. If the game was meant to be like Doom, ammo. then maybe, maybe the three weapon limit would be... Would still be balanced. It wasn't supposed to be like Doom, though. It was inspired by Fear specifically, and I don't think just because Fear had three weapons that this one should too. I haven't gone back to play Fear, to be fair, so I can't say if it holds up or not. I remember seeing like my sister's fucking boyfriend at the time playing it, and I was like, what, like ten or eleven? That is a very something. good hot take, Golden Apples. The only thing that really even feels like Fear about it is that it kind of looks like it. It's so bizarre to me that they would do it this way. But a two-weapon limit absolutely can work if it has the systems to support it that push experimentation. Halo is the perfect example. Yeah. Oh, okay, I have a lot to say here. This is going to be really dumb. I'm just going to let this play. This is your stage. This is your stage. Yes. Halo is the perfect example. Yeah, you only have two weapons in Halo, but in Halo you run out of ammo on the battlefield and you run around picking up other weapons to improvise with. And yes, this happens in Trepang 2 as well, sometimes. So, I just have to say, you picked, by and large, the two worst examples from Halo Combat Evolved you could have for your point here. You picked the library, which every single motherfucker on that mission is going to go what? Shotgun and 9 times out of 10 pistol. The only thing they're dropping it for is maybe a fucking rocket launcher or an assault rifle to deal with the goddamn infection forms. Then Truth and Reconciliation. You start with a sniper that has like 10 times the ammo you're supposed to have. Of course you're not dropping that for the whole mission. Are you retarded? Especially with the amount of generous ammo they give you in this mission. Even on Legendary. You're never running out. These are like the two worst examples you could have picked for your point here. Halo does make you pick up weapons on the battlefield. But there's nothing stopping you from using the same two weapons. Even when you have to pick up new ones or get ammo for them. The levels are usually pretty generous with their ammo. This is just a null point. ...to improvise with. And yes, this happens in Trepang 2 as well, sometimes. But some of you may remember a little game called Halo Infinite that completely broke the Halo combat loop by one... I also love how he's going to claim that Halo Infinite broke the Halo combat loop, which I think a lot of people have broke this down already, including Thunderstruck, if he's still here in chat. I know he was earlier. He has a video on it. And even he talked about this, where it's like, you didn't... You, you admitted to not even being a fan of any of the older games, or liking their formula, yet you're now going to speak out on behalf of all Halo fans and talk about how their game is supposed to be made and played. Like, what the fuck? Exactly. 
He did that in his Halo That's Infinite review, and he's still repeating the same points from those reviews here. This is some dumb bullshit argument. <laughs> Trepang 2, aesthetic-wise, is like Fear, but more tactical-looking. I don't know, this is a crappy analysis. <laughs> Fair enough, Drag. I can see how it's inspired by Fear, but it doesn't look the same to me. It doesn't look the same, but it looks very inspired by it. You yeah. can tell. That's what I. That's pretty much what I said. It's just it, I can see how it's inspired, but it doesn't look the same. <laughs> Scythe has gone to call me egotistical. Yeah, that was stupid. That whole debate last night was retarded. I mean, it. It's running out though. These aliens uh, that gets dropped wave by wave literally drains your sniper ammo. It. Yeah, you still get plenty in that level. You start with sixty-four in reserve, and then the four you have in your mag, so that's 68 rounds. I can make it through all the way to the gravity lift without having to go back for ammo until after I've cleared it out and you're ready to go up the lift. That is me being a very skilled player, so granted, more retarded players are going to waste more ammo, but if I only have to go back for ammo once and there's still a shit ton by the gravity lift, I'm sure even with two players, you're fine. <laughs> I've been playing the game since I was five, so I know how, how it is when you're retarded as well. I remember how struggle, how much I struggled on that mission. Allowing you to pick a fully stocked weapon of your choice before every mission, and two, most importantly, scattering ammo boxes around the map. Allow yeah, the ammo boxes that don't refill the ammo of the actual overpowered weapons. So if you just choose a fucking battle rifle and a goddamn, I don't know, like let's say a grav hammer or an energy sword, they're gonna run the fuck out. <laughs> exactly. Allowing you to refill the ammo of your preferred weapon. Now, instead of being pushed into experiment. Yeah, see this special fucking super weapon you got here? You're not gonna always find more ammo for that when you're out and about in You'll the actual missions. You'll very rarely find a, an ammo box that thing. Yeah, if you do, you're lucky and you're like, oh, fucking sweet shit, I can keep using my busted weapon. Patient through ammo limits, you can just run around with the same two guns of your preference the whole time and approach every mission the same way. I never put down the- Except I didn't approach every mission the same way. You said it yourself that this game with its versatility allows for player expression. Trepang 2 is doing the exact same thing. You just you don't do like it when you can play different ways that you don't like. There's about a dozen different ways to go into like an entry point in Trepang. Guns blazing, taking hostage, cloak around. He's all literally like he praises player expression way. in these types of games, but the second there's a different play style that he doesn't like, he bitches about it. Exactly. The battle rifle because I never had to. I guess people like this kind of player freedom, but I will player freedom. You mean the shit that equates to player expression and the stuff you praise in every game? I'll never understand the appeal. It allows for homogenization oh, of gameplay Dragon, that's on a level that's in the game. just. Enjoy that. What is? I'm actually curious on uh, what 106 what, looks like. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's explained in game. Me and Psycho, so. That's fair. Um, it always felt good when you got a uh, zero point, a bunch of zeros, one percent chance of finding ammo for that busted weapon. It did. Yes, it I will like agree. The lottery. It's the dopamine flowing. And uh, yeah, no, this whole point he's making here of homogenization of gameplay, again, you can't approach every mission the same way in this game because you're not going to always find ammo boxes. In fact, it's very rare you're going to find the power ammo boxes you need for the special weapons you have in the middle of every single mission. In the open world, you can make a bit of a case for it, but even then, they're not everywhere. And you, he seriously overrates how powerful the battle rifle is because what? It can get headshots? It's the point of precision weapons in this game. It's not the only precision weapon. There's like, how many in Halo Infinite? You got the sidekick, the battle Five. rifle, the fucking stalker. That's at least three I can think of off the top of my head. The commando, that's four. Isn't there the impaler? The big, big boy? The impaler? Yeah, the big old thing that launches the harpoon. Oh, the skewer. Yeah. Yeah, the skewer, thank you. It can, it's just fucking overpowered as shit anyway. And then there's also the mangler. So that's like six that I can think of. The bandit was added after the fact that it was, is that in campaign now too? Because I haven't played it since it was added. I haven't played campaign. So I don't know if that's in the campaign or not. If it is, that is another one though. So, oh no, headshot weapons. They're too overpowered. Homogenized gameplay, guys, even though precision weapons have been in Halo since combat evolved. Fuck. Imagine being an expert in game design and also not understanding the concept of player freedom, right? Like, how does some such a basic thing go over your head? Just sad. 
Trepang 2 does the same thing. You can pick whatever weapons you want before every mission. Oh, thank you. That shot shock rifle, that is another one. And every mission is mostly keeping you stocked, whether it's ammo drops in combat, the eventual abundance of weapon boxes, where, yes, you can find other weapons to use, but you can just as easily find a full ammo refill for the gun you've been depending on for the past hour. Now, didn't you and Krillix actually pretty much agree prove on the, the fact that we proved him wrong in the harder difficulties when Krillix fell into a room full of zombies and ran out of every single ammo type. Yeah, he, he was out of every. I remember. I remember like several times while he was playing, and this isn't just in one Don't day get me either. Wrong. And during major fights, you can just get a boatload of ammo, but there are certain parts in combat where the game will deliberately deprive you of ammo for the weapons you've been using. I remember and him. Make you pick up something on the ground. Yeah, I like it. I remember him saying over. This wasn't just the same day either. This was like a couple days span of him playing the game. He said several times, or he would like quote Mayo talking about how the game like liberally gives you ammo. And he was just like, I'm out of ammo. The game liberally gives me ammo, by the way. <laughs> Shit like that. It's just like, damn. Fuck. Getting called out. So this is a bit of a point of contention, to say the least, I guess. I don't have much to say here, but I know some guy and Krillix definitely disagree with him on this shit. Or side mission weapon boxes where you can use credits to refill guns at any moment, before, after, or even during combat rounds. I wouldn't have as much of a problem with this. Combat you rounds, just you mean side missions. <laughs> Those aren't in the main game. So Those aren't in the main missions. So they're just side missions then? Yeah, the, those are just in side missions. There's only like two or three of them in one of the... Look, so there's about six, seven side missions, right? I only ever see the supply box appear in like three of them, maybe four. The rest are kind of just different. As in the unidentified structure. Or the mission that is in... Oh, so he's pretty much Kenya. just complaining about getting a power-up, essentially. Just a yeah, little you boost. can buy, you can buy have... that from killing things. Don't get me wrong. You can even buy support guys coming in and helping you. But you're pretty much just complaining about getting a power up at that point. Am I not mistaken? Well, like, at any moment. Yeah, you need to work for that cash. You're, you're calling in a gun at any moment, but look, let's look. You got, look how much money he has, and look how much these. I would cost. like to point out that no matter what you buy, the second time you buy it, it's more expensive. Yeah, that I remember Krillix saying it gets more expensive every time you buy an so item. So you can the same buy it. Too. Let's say you want to buy some armor. It's your third armor down. It goes from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000 to maybe 4,500. The more armor you buy, the more expensive it gets, the more money you drain. It encourages you to try new things and tactics, I agree. He's just bitching for the sake of bitching here. I feel like if this guy applied for a job in the gaming industry, he'd be denied with one YouTube watch. To be fair, he's gotten interviews from different game developers, Heck, so that doesn't give me hope. the most expensive item I've seen was when I bought, when I got a little bit too shot up, and I kept buying health kits, and I got to about a 10 grand health kit. Which, you Jesus. cannot pay for that. You can't. So if you do buy too many things from that shop, you will not be able to buy anything else. Can confirm no it does get really expensive? Alright then, so we've got multiple sources here saying this. There's a weapon in Crashlands on the meta quest called the Impaler. Were you thinking of that just a minute? No, he was thinking about the skewer from Halo Infinite. He was talking yeah, about just, the... I forgot what it was called. Yeah, uh, he was but, talking about the skewer. It things. It's basically the repl replacement for the Spartan laser in Halo Infinite, and it's the big fucking banished, like, sniper slash... Harpoon gun. Uh, yeah, it's a giant harpoon that acts kind of like a sniper that can also take out vehicles. Basically, Spartan laser. Just differently. Just different. Just different Spartan laser. Functionally the same. It's a physical Spartan laser. I don't F like that. That's why I'm... Functionally, it's a Spartan laser. It is very different, exactly. but functionally, it's the same. To answer Four your out. question, Jakey, yes. Just Cause 3 on sale for $3 is definitely worth it. Yes. Buy that right now. I, d I, got, I got that shit on uh, PC for free, but, I mean, it was fucking gifted to me by Griffin doing a giveaway, so I can't complain there, but I bought it on... PS4 and played it a while back with all the DLCs. If you can get that shit for three bucks, definitely worth it. That is a really fun game. Some of the most fun open world I've ever had. Yeah. Or even during combat rounds. I wouldn't have as much of a problem with this if you could just hold a third weapon. Keeping my primaries stocked and switching out a third depending on its utility and my own ideas for playing around and experimenting. So what's stopping you from doing that with the two weapon limit though? Yeah, you literally, you can just keep that shotgun. You don't need to get rid of it. Hell, keep it for standby when heavy enemies come by and shred them. That's what I did. 
I'm just grabbing it and weapons off the ground from enemies. But I want to keep my shotguns in my in my DMR. So fuck you. Yeah. Why would you keep the DMR when barely enemy any enemies? You know have what? It? You know what? I just realized. He's basically bitching. He's become the very people he hated in Halo Infinite when they said that they wanted to keep their fucking busted weapons and shit, right? He complained about like, oh, I guess this sort of player freedom's bad, and he doesn't agree with the fact that you can just get like any weapon you want or whatever. And he complained about that in this game, but then when he talks about like trying different options and shit, he's like, no, I need a third weapon slot. I don't want to drop keep, these weapons. I, I need to keep my shotgun and DMR. I need to Bear keep. In mind the DMR is never really held by any enemies. They're held by friendlies, but not by any enemies that I've seen. At best, you'll find them laying around. Mayo, we've become the very thing you destroy. You, you swore to destroy. I was asking him if he, I was asking him if he confused the weapons. I don't know if, if he did, to be fair. That's what people complain about in Doom Eternal. That's uh, no, Rob Breach, I didn't even know there was a game called Crashlands. I apologize. Uh, yeah, this is, this is fucking, I just realized that he basically became the thing he swore to destroy here, though. I agree with you, Dr. Dragon. I've only ever seen DMRs from the crash site. The only other time I saw them was in the second campaign mission, and they were laying against a wall. I agree, shotgun neuron activation. Also, what's up, Misfit? Big ups, homie. Appreciate you stopping in. We're going through some mayoisms. Hey, yes, you guessed it. He pretty much wants this to be more like Doom Eternal. Too, but only having two name. weapon slots and allowing me to refill ammo so liberally, it's just Halo Infinite all over again. That's Occasionally... what leads me to believe he's playing on lower difficulty. He says he gets ammo liberally. You'll notice when you start going up the higher difficulties, you will l lack ammo constantly. The higher yep. you go, the less ammo enemies drop. Hell, they even start dr not dropping armor. Mayo. So from him saying that he gets ammo constantly, liberally, that leads me to believe that he's just lying. Mayotisms be true, yes. Oh, man. I just... I don't know Krillix had a lot of, like, points of contention with that. Like I said, he kept making jokes about, like, I'm getting ammo liberally, by the I'm way. I'm getting ammo so liberally, he says, <laughs> as he's fighting off red flash demons in an underground bunker. And he has no ammo in either of his weapons. He's just running around <laughs> hopeless. I would agree, Deathshot. In higher difficulties, it's all about tactics more so than just running in guns blazing. Taking a hostage and using the grenade on them is a very good distraction. People were legit and complaining about not slowly. being able to use whatever guns they wanted in Doom Eternal. Mayo dire directly disagrees with that. Yeah, and he was doing the same thing in Halo Infinite. He's become the very thing he swore to destroy. That's what I'm saying, focus. <laughs> he's literally become the thing he's bitched about in these games. I don't know how. How the fuck he does that go over sent your head? To their level. How does that go over your head, Mayo? Played on this game on very hard. You get quite a lot of ammo at certain oh, points. Oh, don't get me wrong. You get a lot of ammo at certain points. Mostly the wide open areas. There are certain points where you just lack ammo. So there are points I will contend with them that you get a lot of ammo, but not everywhere. If anything, they should buff the beat the DMR because it's literally the SL8 rifle. So. You might as well increase the capacity and overall usefulness and more medium to even close quarters. I wouldn't know. haven't played it yet, to be fair. I know the most interesting weapons to me have been the shotgun and the vector. I'm more of a shotgun sort of pistol with burst fire kind of guy. The vector looks really fun. I can't deny it. It is very fun, it looks especially fun when you put use. the long barrel on it. I ended up in situations where I had to throw down my shotgun and pick up a rifle with only 30 bullets, use it up, and then grab something else. And these were some of the best moments I had. They're I feel like you just want to play Severed Steel. He very much just exactly. described Severed Steel. <laughs> it's literally what you do. You go from enemy to enemy, bouncing around with bullet time, killing them to get your bullet time back, and it also heals you when you're in bullet time. And it's a movement shooter, and you don't ever get ammo back for your weapons. You're constantly grabbing new weapons off dead enemies. And you use the, what you have in the clip, and then on to the next weapon. You pretty much just described Severed Steel. <laughs> They're just so few and far between, because the game seems dead set on making sure I'm as comfortable as possible. 
it's so weird because fear regularly had me in situations okay. where fear I gotta counter. set down that low ammo penetrator or assault rifle because picking up a new gun with full ammo is a more advantageous position going forward. It's sad to see that kind of that, design that, that, get pushed what? aside in a spiritual sequel. Okay, but... Alright, I don't think he's talked about it yet, but doesn't he bring up later on how he literally de deliberately just kept ammos without... or kept guns without ammo? Because he was like, so. I don't want to drop them? I think so. Trepang 2 is Titanfall Mayo, without please, grapple hook. <laughs> please don't pull an alien isolation. Mayo, it's not fear. It's not fear. Also, you're making a moot point because I'm pretty sure you directly contradict this in a little bit. I'm not saying I didn't have fun or experiment in the sandbox. I did. I like this combat. There's good challenge and excitement to be had. Okay, so everything thus far, this is where it came back to bite him from earlier where he was talking about, like, this game was forcing him to make decisions. And he's like, yeah, I like being forced to make these decisions. But you've constantly bitched at every turn about n not making decisions. <laughs> Like, even down to Buddy. the cloak. Even down to you just disregarding the cloak at first, and then you're misusing of it. Oh my god, Mayo, It's like please. he pumped this review out as fast as possible without actually saying much about you. He literally played the game, and then he just... It's why he never, didn't even review the game fully, and why he just reviews the G-Man's video. That's how I feel. Probably. Well, oh my, my fear came true. He wants this game to be fear, yeah. I, I know. He wants it to be Fear and Doom Eternal. But it certainly isn't as well designed as Fear regarding weapon variety okay, incentive. Buddy. Okay. Oh, I thought you had more to say. You're just okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, look. Each weapon has a niche in this game. Minigun is good for spraying down a bunch of enemies in a crowd. You rarely get it, and you have to usually go into a level with it. The catch is, well, you never get ammo for it, as obvious. The rifle is very high recoil, but it will usually kill an enemy in a singular shot to the chest, if not two. So, balanced on that regard, if you're more of a high damage sort of playstyle. The Chris Vector all around is just, it's a bullets, bullet machine. You constantly get ammo for it. It's your usual go-to weapon. Pistol alongside it. It's your standard pistol, you know? Good right. to have by your side. Easily customizable. You can make it automatic if you want. Dual wield it, even. Is the penetrator good for killing people halfway across the room? Look, the the main point here is that you will have a lot of these options, and he's just bit, he's you have just refusing he's refusing to not always want to use them and acting like fear did it better because three weapon system. He yeah, just doesn't but, want to drop some of his guns. There is a lot of play styles with these guns. You can go all damage, lack of fire rate. You know, you can go all fire rate, lack of damage. You know, it's I'm up starting, to you, you know? I'm starting to think he doesn't understand the definition of inspired. Neither do I, because he's acting like because it's inspired by fear, it has to literally copy fear. And that's not the case. I feel locked into things too often because of these limitations. And it applies to grenades as well. You feel locked into these things. It's not a g issue on the fucking game. You can still try new fucking options whenever you want and experiment. You're just refusing to drop your shotgun without ammo in it because you don't want to risk not getting more ammo for your shotgun. Which I find even more amusing because Krillix and I disproved him by saying he usually thinks that you can only customize a weapon when you go into the match. Or very rarely in it. You know, in, in the level. There's like one every five seconds. You saw that with Krillix's stream, right? You just walk into a room and there's probably a customization box right there, you know? Hell, there was one during a chase sequence. <laughs> I don't remember that one, but uh, yeah. Running from the Mothman down the tunnels. There was one right there. I just, yeah. There are six different equipment types. Frag grenades, flashbangs, firebombs, proximity mines, rat bombs, and tomahawks. Thank you for but mentioning the rat bombs. in another baffling design decision, you're not allowed to carry more than one type. I can run around with five frag grenades, which is nice, but I'd much rather have access to a smaller number of two or three different equipment types to give myself more dynamic Why? strategy options. I'm not entirely against this point, but I feel like part of the game is I went over his head because it's like you you can experiment with one of those options, and Krillix was pointing this out that you still have the fact that you can grenade enemies by like taking hostage and throwing them. Exactly. Even if you don't have a normal grenade on you, if you grab an enemy and press G, you have a grenade. Yeah. 
enemies are your grenades if you're enemies are your grenades if you're creative. Just pull the pin on the enemy's grenade. Boom. Enemies literally are your grenades if you're creative enough. Like you see in Halo, like you see in the Division, like you see in Resistance. Also, Keem's pointed this out when we were watching this in VC last night. The Division doesn't let you switch grenades like that on the fly, so you only have like one type on you. And he's for some reason citing it as if you could. Thank you, Ah. Uh, thank you. Since Fall of Man, like you see in <gasps> Doom Eternal. Hell, like in. <laughs> he uttered the he uttered the forbidden word, Psycho. We gotta get to the bunker right now. <laughs> we gotta go to the psych bunker. <laughs> he mentioned Doom Eternal. We gotta get to the psych bunker. We're in the trenches now. He Take mentioned shelter. He mentioned the no no words. He wants Take it to be Doom Eternal. <laughs> I love how much of a joke he tries to treat it himself at this point. It's like, dude, you, Buddy, just, it's because not a joke. just because you're just because you're self-aware of the fact that you want every game to be Doom Eternal doesn't mean your criticisms about every game want being Doom Eternal are good. Buddy, you think it might be a joke? It's not. It's the truth, and it's sad that it's the truth you because must... it means you have not every game needs to be that way. And, and it, just because you're self-aware of the fact that you want most games to be like Doom Eternal doesn't mean your criticisms are suddenly valid when it comes to wanting a game to be like that. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> like, we can sit here and go, haha, funny, all day long, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make your criticisms any more valid when you're referencing it, when you do that every other game. It's upsetting, man. It's just, it's just it retarded. Really it's like me saying every game should be fucking Halo Combat Evolved. It's dumb. In fear, you could hold three different grenade types in fear and use any of them at any time. Frag Guys, it's just, it, it needs to be fear. It Look, needs to be fear. It was it's like how alien isolation needs to be prey. It was inspired by fear. It's I was like inspired every... by fear. Thank you for noticing. I was inspired by prey. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> this shit needs to be fear because it was inspired by fear. Oh no, the addiction became even more severe. Yep. I, li I like Doom Eternal, but this is it is a meme at this point. Like, The mayo tub is rotting. Someone throw him out. Fucking hell. I regret the inspired by Cars line. No, no don't regret it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's the good, it's the best line. Grenade, proximity mine, and remote bomb. Why can't we have that? I don't understand how the- What? What is thank you, thank you, get out of there, yo. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart has been accurately described as Doom Eternal for kids. You should play that game for his mm. face. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Damn. Aid proximity mine and remote bomb. Why couldn't we have that? I don't understand how the developers didn't think that setting down a proximity mine to cover your exit and then throwing a flashbang into the next room wouldn't create more fun what exit? gameplay. What yeah. exit? Yeah, Krillix pointed this out that this game, at least with its arenas, is sort of like Doom or like, you know, basically an arena shooter. They're wide and open. Barely any other rooms connect to that one room. Well, it's not just that. It's the fact that you're not supposed to, like, move on from, an, from a combat encounter until you've cleared it. Exactly. Sort you of can't. like Doom. You physically cannot exit some rooms without killing everyone in that room. It's supposed to be like a... Somewhat like a fucking... What would you say? Like... A boomer shooter? It's not a boomer shooter, but that part of it is supposed to be kind yeah, of like, like that. Yeah, like, Menace Project Nexus, sort of. Like, you need to kill everyone in that room to get to the next room. You know? Yeah. That's the only way to do it. So... You're not supposed to just, like, run through, put a trip mine behind you, be all stylish No enemies it. would be coming in behind you unless it's a boss room. And so, I don't, I don't, I don't get this. If the part is good, you should play when it comes to PC? Probably not. The only, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, Rover, the only Sony exclusive, like, first party that I gave a fuck about was Spider-Man. That was it. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. But, yeah. If you think it's good, more power to you. And another part of the problem is the modification system. Whereas Fear's oh weapons God. were static, Trepang 2 allows for weapon customization through upgrade parts found in little bits of exploration and completing side missions. Now, I love the connection between side missions and weapon upgrades. Not only are these fun, action-packed, wave-based challenges, but you get something from it that applies to the main campaign. Great. 
Unfortunately, I think it just contributes to the confusion because when you customize and upgrade a weapon in a video game, is it not because you like that weapon and want to hold on to it? This mm, not necessarily. Not no. necessarily. It could just mean you want a very powerful weapon for the next room, then you can just ditch it. Y yeah. I mean, you'll get that shotgun back. You will get that shotgun back. All you need to do is find another green chest. Like, do you, you still have to spend the money on the shotgun, but the attachments are still on it, correct? No, not even that. Not even that. That's only for the side missions. In the oh. main missions, you can just pick up another dead guy shotgun, find another green chest somewhere on the map, and mod it for free. So this is a null point, then? Yes. The only time you need to pay for another weapon is during those missions where you just the, can't find one. This during is, the, like, so uh, this is, again, pretty much just bitching about a power-up. Yes. This is the funny thing about this. He thinks of it as like there's only one green chest on each level. No, there's so you can find them. You just gotta look for them. You're very much just Hell, bitching that this is a... in the second level. You can run past one when the Mothman is chasing you. This is pretty much it's just, just there. It's pretty much just bitching about a power up though. At that point. Yeah, That's you what can it is. use these if you want to. They are not required. Also, I think he's about to... Let, I'm just going to let this play for a second. This isn't Borderlands. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> is it not because you like that weapon and want to hold on to it? This isn't Borderlands. I You're right, Mayo. You're right. It isn't Borderlands. This game this doesn't have... From Borderlands. This game doesn't have weapons that have fucking levels on it that get more powerful with a base damage. That's stupid. No, these that are temporary... That shotgun you're using, that is the same shotgun Dave over there that you just blew his head off as. This is... This is... Like, these weapons... Don't become that much more powerful. These are temporary little power-ups that you can give yourself. And even Curlux is pointing out that even the, the incinerator rounds don't do that much more on top of the regular shotgun. Yeah, as Buck says in the chat, some of the upgrades kind of make the guns feel weaker, in my opinion. And that's true. Some of the guns do take away the aspect of what they are made for, as in a suppressor on a shotgun. But you can do it, if you want. It's up to you. Yeah, he'd compare Trepang 2 to Borderlands. Like, dude, these guns don't have levels. They don't have a base damage that increases as you level up. This isn't a fucking action RPG FPS. What the fuck are you on about? I can only hold two weapons. I've got an incendiary round shotgun that destroys everyone, and a rifle with a laser sight and a 2x scope. I'm shredding over here. And yeah, that grenade launcher is really cool, but after I use it, I'm going to have to remember where I dropped one of my modded weapons and come back to get it. No, you aren't. As you just pointed out, you can just go back to another one of those chests that you find and get another one and put the mods on it. So what the fuck? Oh my God. This makes absolutely no sense. I'm losing it. To be fair, there's only three minutes left. Not even. We can make it. <laughs> But yeah, that just makes absolutely no sense. It's a weird position to be in. Or if, say, my incendiary round shotgun runs out of ammo, and there's no shotgun ammo in the next room, normally I'd be okay just dropping the shotgun to use another weapon for a while, and that's fun. But the next shotgun I find isn't going to have the incendiary mod, and I don't want to lose it. So I guess I'll just be you running around the next areas with an empty shotgun for a while. So right there, he directly contradicts the point he was making earlier. It was like fear forced wait. him to like grab weapons wait, when wait, he ran wait, out of wait, ammo. Wait, wait. This game's doing My the same Christ. thing. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You... If there's a shotgun in the same room as you, you can take the ammo from that shotgun for your incendiary. It's not different ammos. But I'd also like to point out, even if you take that shotgun that is not modded, it's only gonna be like two rooms, so you can mod it again. And it's again, not that long. Yeah. And again, he's directly contradicting his point from earlier. He was like, fear forced him to like grab and try different weapons when he ran out of ammo. The second this game does it, he bitches about it. I don't need to do that. I like my modded shotgun. I'm gonna run around with this empty shotgun for two rooms. See what I mean? These systems don't work together. Yes, they do. You're just retarded. These systems have actively worked together in other first-person shooters. You're just dumb. This is why the game meshes so well. The system works flawlessly, in my opinion. The combat, at least. There are some gripes I have with it, but this system feels great. I see under the Dane Ramage, I drink fair. Just don't, don't kill yourself. Don't drink too much, buddy. I'm noticing a pattern. He keeps comparing to other games rather than assessing this game on its own merits. Yeah, he does that a lot, too. <clears throat> He'd rather just compare it to other games and say what he wants it to be rather than assessing a game for what it is. 
and giving it props where it's due. Does any... Have any I'm guessing have any, any of you played Darkness 1 and 2? No, I have not. Isolated, they are good systems, but together they end up working against each other, and it ends up making Trepang 2 a much less interesting combat experience than I wanted it to be. It's awesome, don't get me wrong, slow motion sliding under a guy and blasting him in the air as he flies around in mid-2000s physics engine madness is really fun. Movement and vaulting is fast and snappy, loading times are lightning fast and you get right back to the action almost immediately. While the campaign isn't exactly compelling, I do enjoy the level variety as- I don't know, I haven't played through it so I can't speak on that, but- that's pretty subjective, especially considering you don't usually ever address story in games anyway. You literally don't give a fuck about story, mate. I don't want to hear it. So, you just saying it's not compelling tells me absolutely nothing. It's a pretty just disingenuous fucking what remark. if I told you, Mayo, that I think it's a very compelling and interesting story? You can just sit here and say you don't care about story in games and move on with your day and I won't hold it against you, but you- I know you don't care about it, but you won't say that. You'll just say, this shit's unremarkable, it's- it's fucking boring. I, I don't get it when you just don't mention story if you're not going to talk Look, about it. Look, I love it. this dark dystopian world where water is 550 a piece. Amazing. I remember you mentioned that. I was like, damn. <laughs> it's just a funny meme. Looking at the vending machine and seeing that water is 550. That is a dystopia. Yo, I found I find out he wants this game to be Dusk 2.0. Eh? Not exactly. Because dust doesn't even fucking have grenades, to be fair. <laughs> As that was one of the flaws in Fear, the whole thing was basically just office environments. I love that enemies all drop a small shard of armor to incentivize you to run or slide over their corpses and stay in the action. I love that grabbing enemies lets you use- As if there wasn't enough incentivization to stay in the action with the stamina mechanics and the focus bar. Exactly. Use their grenade by throwing their body and watching it explode. I'm happy that checkpoints don't refill your health, so you find yourself in tough situations that you gotta overcome. It's awesome that slides and jump kicks don't cancel reload animations. I appreciate that the missions are more than just key hunting and switch hitting. You gotta shoot to destroy stuff sometimes, or throw bodies into generators and they explode. It's good mm stuff, it works. Mindlessly blow shit up. I like it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm not against his points here. It's just kind of funny. I'm not. To me. I, I just find it. I love those parts of the game. The great. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how to turn off the reactor. Grabs man, flings into reactor. My favorite part about the Trepang lore is that 50 cents is, is a common thing in the Trepang universe. I, I'd like okay. to replay the game, and I. But everything is like an extra 50 cents. Didn't force to delete my profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no profiles, just the one. Hey, new How song. does that make it? Hi, me. Your next paycheck is fat. Damn. Get me a ticket to Alaska then. <laughs> but hey, Shmi. Here's what I don't get. To a full release. I like having my completed save because I can replay any yeah. level I want, including side missions, and set the difficulty. Why would I give that up just to start a fresh save? I you wouldn't. You just replay you the... It's not needed. You don't need to do that. Just replay a mission with fucking... And set the difficulty. It's not that hard. You just set it yourself. You don't need a fresh save. What is the point here? Again, weird decisions. Like the customizable appearance options. There's no multiplayer, and I don't think I saw a single reflective surface where I can even see myself. So what's the point? Maybe I... It's cosmetics. Maybe. I want to point this out. The developers have literally stated, you don't see 106 for a reason. It's to clear to build tension. It's... Where also, it's just fucking cosmetics. It's like the fucking. It's supposed to make you feel accomplished. You get some of those cosmetics for doing good on levels. I don't get why you would really care. Like, you get cosmetics in a video game. It's whatever. Exactly as Dr. Dragon says. Intrigued. You can see your own body during drop kicks, running around. Yeah, you just don't really see its head or anything. That's the point. Yeah, I know. Well, let me know. All right, that's all I have to say. Again, I like Trepang 2. It'll be in my best games of the year list, for sure. I'm just also disappointed by it. And instead of reviewing the whole package like everyone else does, I wanted to really pick apart some of the issues I think it has that I don't hear people discussing. Probably because most of these weren't even fucking issues. You were just nitpicking the shit out of it because you're retarded. <laughs> no wonder people didn't talk about it.
What did you think? Did you like Trepang 2? Do you see yourself replaying it, or is it more of a one-and-done sort of thing? I'm probably gonna get it and replay the shit of it when I do. Well, I just haven't the played it I yet. Mean, it's got an infinite horde mode. Of course I'm gonna play more. Yeah, that looks, that's gonna keep my attention for a while you know when I do pick the game. That's a good up. thing to end off on Road Breach. I also am disappointed that this game is not Doom Eternal. Indeed. I'm upset. His most atrocious suggestion was the three weapon limit. That was one of the dumbest ones. And he pretty much just said fear had it, so why can't this game? Uh mayo. Mayo mayo. Man, mayo, thank you for the This was an amazing re beautiful oh. review. This was yeah. Quote unquote review, because you know he doesn't do reviews of games, guys. Just remember that. Clearly he's the benefactor of video games. He knows what's best. He does know what's best. Fear and Trafang 2 are two different games despite the inspiration. Yeah, I said earlier, I can tell that it's inspired by it, but it does not look the same. So he is going to do the same thing he did with Sifu. Trafang 2 is going to be one of his best games of the year and also the most disappointing game of the year. <laughs> True. There's Sifu all over again. <laughs> Wham, this game not fucking what I want it to be, but game of the year. Exactly. Oh, man. You very much confused We me. don't talk about Subject 69, Dr. Dragon. We don't. don't of course we do. That. We always do. We no, just... no, Psycho. We've only been live for an hour and a half. Is there anything else we can watch? I have no earthly idea. Let me go to his channel and see if there's any other. You know, anything else. maybe, maybe, maybe Mayo Movie Night could keep our interest. Fuck mm -hmm. that, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Mortal Turbo Kombat. Turbo Overkill, the final episode. Oh boy, he made a Turbo Overkill review. I have not. Oh. I have yet to play Turbo Overkill yet. I've Nor seen. Have I, I've so seen. I can't judge it. I've seen Shmi play it quite a bit. That'd be something near can break down. Another three Australian from Get Out. There you go. Appreciate it, homie. Killzone 3 had a There's three a weapon limit. There's a video that made fine. me want to bowl my eyes out. I, I think change is fine, and that's the thing. It's not trying to just be a fear remake or fear 2.0. It's trying to be Trepang, just inspired by fear. Some yeah, inspiration. Like certain games can be inspired by something, and it's an entirely different playstyle. I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't have that much experience with Turbo Overkill. I've been playing Horde Mode on there non-stop. That would be what I would do. <laughs> you, see, you know what I did when I got fucking Ultra Kill near? I, all I did was just play Cyber Grind. <laughs> I wanted to get Michael on to react to this one someday. The fucking that video system made shock me want to bawl my eyes out. This System Shock review was not good when I had when I watched it with Michael. I wanted to get him on stream someday. But I'm not really sure what we can look at right now. I have no idea. We could take a peek at this. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd be able to judge it properly. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be able, Like, I haven't played it, but... Then again, I didn't play Sifu when I went at him for that. Near, if you think he's going to talk about the story of Turbo Overkill, it's Mayo. His Alien Isolation one? I'm supposed to do a video on that garbage. You think I want to sit here for 50 fucking minutes watching that? Oh my god. What we got? What beautiful videos does he have to show us? Why pray is better this. than Atomic Heart? Look at this, look at this. This is fucking 50 minutes. I'm planning to what do a response to this. What is wrong with me? To, literally about to pull a rags, EFAP moment. There's Atomic Heart review? Okay, we can take a peek. I have seen oh, uh, Reject God. play some of that. No, not his Atomic Heart review, please. Ah, why you know, why you there? I played through it. He's oh boy. Okay, but uh, no guarantees we're gonna sit through this whole fucking thing because it's twenty-seven speed, minutes. Yeah. But we'll have a peek at this. He made a view or a video. Why praise better than Atomic Heart when they're nowhere near comparable? I actually know a good amount of about Turbo Overkill, and I'm so happy they changed the motorcycle level. The OG motorcycle was clunky as hell. I haven't played it, so <laughs> I wouldn't know how how bad it was. Maybe it's 13 Reasons Why Alien ISO video. I might do that on on a stream. Maybe after I actually make my video responding to his actual review. <clears throat> that like to dislike ratio? Fair. <laughs> Very fair. It's almost fucking half the amount of likes he has. Good God. Oh, okay, alright. 
Well, actually, let me make sure the audio on we this is good. We saw this video. Spoilers we're not for there, most of Psycho, but we watched this video combat. in Psych Wars General. Yeah, we did watch this video once before. I don't remember yeah, a Yeah, it was awful. Um, actually, before we do, I'm going to be right back real quick, guys. Understandable. If you want to entertain chat, you can. I'll throw the music on real quick. Oh, sure, sure. Let's, let's, let's bring up the Some Guy Online chat hour. Yeah. <laughs> you can have a Q&A real quick. Y'all get to know some guy. I'll be right back real quick. All right, anyone? Who's got some questions for me? Who wants to learn about the guy online? Let's see what we got. Raining on Transformers, I'd say it's a pretty good genre. I love the animated things, especially the anime that Netflix had about a little while ago. I forgot what it was called. Favorite game I've ever played? Probably... There's nothing that's ever going to top the feeling of booting up Minecraft for the first time. But if I had to be completely honest, Project Zomboid. Also, I'm biased on the Halloween or Christmas comment since my birthday is one day before Christmas. So I'm kind of biased on that. What else we got? What else we got? Ah, ah. So you want me to answer what I think about questions. I think questions are necessary in life. Every human needs to ask a question once in a while. In which case, my question is, where did your father go? Come on. Think for an answer, huh? Subject 420, that is classified information, Dr. Dragon. Can't answer that for you. Nor can I answer that one, lest they come after me. Thank you, Sparky. I completely agree with that statement. And Buck, to answer your question, I do believe that Mayo is a contrarian. He just genuinely never seems to think of anything positively, and if it is positive, he thinks of a way to... Compare it with a game that is no way similar, which I find odd. I, let's see, get out there, yo. Has 2023 been a weird year for disappointing releases? I would honestly say that it's been a bit of a rocky year so far. We might pull ourselves out of it, but there have been some stinkers, I'm not gonna lie. Have you ever subbed to Mayo? Hard no. What do I think of the safe situation? I think he's a clown. I think he should think about what he said and how it could affect people. I think he should grow up. That's what I think. I think he should grow up. Actually have a little empathy for humans. Other people. I mean, sure, you can take petty jabs. You can trash talk all you want. I don't care about that. But making certain allegations about against people online is a good way to get people the lifestyles ruined. Simply put, TLDR, I agree with what Golden Apple says about them. That's my statement. Opinions on Halo's future. I think the future of Halo is a bit of a rocky spot. I think it I think it could be good, but it's entirely of the circumstance, chance. Depends on what they do with it. And opinions on Halo Infinite multiplayer? I think it's decent. I don't go out of my way to play it. I only really play it when my friends play it. Opinions on Gundam? Not my thing, but it is my stepbrother's thing. He loves that stuff. God of War Ragnarok base, yes. I agree with you entirely, Buck. The way they fumbled it really put a lot of fear in my heart. It's how I feel about any sort of Blizzard game right now. It just worries me. I try not to have any hope for it. Do I prefer Trepang or Fear? Honestly, both games serve a certain niche for me. I love both of them practically equally. 
Have I seen any videos that you have made, Rogue Breach? Honestly, let's go check your library. I think I've seen two of them. Who we got? All right, I'm back. Welcome back, Psycho. I'm just finishing up with Rogue Breach's question. I've seen your Synthetic Man video. I have also seen your Transformers Fall of Cybertron review. Amazing. Mainly for the memes that were posted about it, but they were pretty decent videos. Alright, let me... Ah, so you want to know my opinion on answers as much as I like questions. Well, answers are also really useful for human conversation. My answer for you is, have you actually given me the answer about where your father is yet? I still need that. I, I need an answer, Ah, I need your credit card number, the date... And the three digits on the back. Yeah, uh, so my question is, can you give me your credit card number, the three little numbers on the back, the expiration date, your social security number, your mother's maiden name, your father's maiden name. Your email address, your, your, uh, your address, you know, all of those things. Putty, please. <laughs> For legal reasons, that is a joke. Synthetic woke man, I suppose. I hope my uh, my nice little uh, time with you all was spent nicely. Thank you all for the questions. All right. So we're going to skim through this anyway. I don't want to end the stream just yet because we haven't been going quite that long. But I'm not... I don't think we're going to be here for the whole fucking half hour of this. Most certainly not. This video contains spoilers for most of Atomic Heart's levels, combat, and bosses. I don't. Oh no, guys! I'll talk about late game story points, but you won't see glimpses of the final boss because of the gameplay discussion. Enjoy the video. Atomic Heart was one of my most anticipated games of 2023. Now that I've played it, it's also one of the most disappointing. While also being in amazing, it's disappointing. I don't I know mean, why. I will not. I will not. Disagree with that. I think it was disappointing, especially in the story and dialogue department. Holy fuck, it was bad. Some of the, the dialogue, gameplay, I can see that. And the gameplay was really good. I liked it. Everything I saw from the gameplay with Reject it looked fun. I considered yeah, I just, getting the game. I hated, I hated the dialogue. I despised it. <laughs> but, yeah. I literally had to mute the dialogue halfway through the game because I just couldn't take it anymore. Incredibly impressive in certain aspects. There's going to be a lot of people who love this game simply for the world it creates. The stunning and Me. ambitious visuals, combining Me. retro vision. I, I don't disagree that there's some people that are going to like the world and the immersion of it, but I don't think that's Thank going to be the only reason they like the game. Thank you, Mayo. You gave a reference for why I love the Atomic Heart world. It looks cool. Very cool. I find it amusing and, it's and not, nice. And no, you know, I feel that's not just graphics. It's just the actual atmosphere and immersive. I love of the, the world. atmosphere of this world because it actually feels like something that could have technically existed. Yeah, it feels tangible. If done right, it feels tangible in that regard. Yeah, it feels like a weird sort of alter world Bioshock, and I it's, love it. It's like the same thing George Lucas tried to do with Star Wars, where he made it like gritty yeah. and down to earth looking in all it, of his scenes. Can, because he wanted feel it to like feel this could happen. Yeah, he wanted it to feel tangible. Was the pretty much the exact word he used. Something you could actually reach into and exist in. Visions of the future with 1950s aesthetics and the jaw-dropping amount of detail on display. I found the story to be entertaining enough to hold my attention, and there's lots of extra story to be found in emails, recordings, and not subscribe. subscribe and hit the enough. bell. I will not. I will not do either of those things. For some of you. But beyond the amazing Welcome presentation, I found Atomic Heart to be unfocused, frequently frustrating, and lacking in compelling moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. What are you doing? You what were we... getting mugged. What you are, are you doing? Frequently frustrating. You and have a KS twenty three M in your hands. Use it. <laughs> what are you doing? You have a literal a four gauge it. shotgun in your grip. Shoot them. <laughs> I'm sorry. This B roll already but is, is awful. Amazing presentation. What is he I doing? Atomic heart to be unfocused. I run. Well, I run. I I hit. Brr. Me no not how turn shoot gun. Uncle bung. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> There's not the mm, not even a minute in, man. <laughs> the fuck. In gameplay, in Atomic Heart, you play as Maluma, a servant doing the dirty work of a man whose technological discoveries revolutionized the Soviet Union and turned it into this grand robotic paradise in the 1950s. Amazing. I do actually love this aesthetic. I have to say, this is really cool. It genuinely feels like an alternate world that could have technically happened if the Soviet Union got the upper hand. Sup, Psycho, what did I miss? We finished covering his actual Trepang 2 video. 
And we're kind of just watching this as some filler right now, because I remember watching it a while ago. And uh, some guy has played through the game, so. I played through Atomic Heart. I almost finished it, but then I just got bored of it. What honestly. happened, Mayo, when you have a gun and you... Wait, wait, wait. Duh, I can't read. What happened, Mayo? You have a gun and you instantly decided to hit a wall. <laughs> he had, it's like he was looking up and he ran into the wall and it just didn't... He had no more, like, that one critical thinking of what to do. Like, hey, what's up, buddy? What's going on? Yeah, he just had no more critical thinking, like, what to do in this situation. He just fucking sat there like a retard. You have a gun. It. You have a big gun at that. They really tried to be Duke Nukem? I, I don't see how. But okay. Right before the release of a new neural network... Unless you're talking about the dialogue, but it just completely missed, then I could see what you're saying. Collective 2.0, that's supposed to unite everyone's consciousness, all the robots suddenly switch to combat mode and start killing everyone. Now you gotta find out what's going on, unravel conspiracies, discover things about yourself, and all that. It's a fine story, it works. Before I start my criticisms, I really want to stress how much I like the world. It's a beautiful place. I love all the original art. It's obvious that a lot of passion and work was put into making this game a reality. I respect that. The outside areas are gorgeous, and the science museum really floored me. But what's going on with the grass here? Did it do this for anyone else? Every local- That's just a fucking fade in That's just a random tech issue, yeah. I, 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 I guess you can bring that up, it's just a random tech issue. <laughs> Just fade in the grass. Everything else about oh, this is really pretty yeah. cool. Did it do this for Yeah, Doctor, else? I remember when they Every moved location. the heck out of the twins. I remember when they also did other stuff with the twins, too. Oh, Twin boy. robos, oh boy. Yeah. Remember, everyone, the six-hour sex cutscene has been confirmed for Atomic Heart. Mayo plays like an Oblivion NPC, I guess. I guess you could say that. ...is meticulously detailed and designed to be unique. It feels like nothing ever repeats, and I really appreciate that. This is a bold artistic vision, and the world of Atomic Heart is one of the main reasons I stuck with it to the end. Now, let's get into it, because boy did I have some problems. We'll the chicken just eating a dude's eye. That's... Cool. This is great. Start small with Professor Kluckenstein. <laughs> I don't know, just little quirks like this would make me love this game. ...and work our way up. There is no FOV slider. This was announced shortly before launch, and it's just L. I will say, any game without the that ability to change my that FOV, L. L. Unacceptable. FOV sliders are not just for fast-paced competitive shooters. They are. They aren't. They're for any game. If I can't change my FOV in your game, there's something Some wrong. Some games where I can't change my FOV can actually make me motion sick. Pretty much any fucking first-person or third-person game. If I can't change my FOV, there's something wrong accessibility options that help people with motion sickness, which I get from low FOV. It also greatly disservices the combat when you can't get a sense of what's around you. Many situations feel claustrophobic and uncomfortable, and I legitimately had moments where I got turned around and disoriented, and it makes the final boss fight incredibly frustrating. I don't think that's all just a problem of the FOV, though. That seems a little that's bit That's actually kind of the point of the game. It's supposed to make you feel claustrophobic and scared. Yeah, that, that I get. It make you turn back on yourself. That seems like an actual, like, you know, thing, like, that seems like something actually deliberate, but the rest of this, like, the, is... Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, like, the rest of this doesn't seem like it all revolves around just the fact that he can't change the FOV. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. I'm personally more of a 9,000 FOV. Get out there. Why didn't we get you know, the 50-year-long <laughs> sex scene with the twin robots true? Uh, asking the real questions. It's unacceptable to not allow FOV changes, especially on PC. If it causes problems for the game, well, you should have been keeping it in mind the whole time as you made it. The game was in development for like a thousand years, okay. and FOV slider if you're just gonna keep bitching about However, FOV, unlike other games, after I've set it to 1080p to maintain a higher frame rate, Atomic Heart resets to 1440p every time I open it. This isn't something I'm always able to immediately notice, and it causes the image in OBS to be far larger than the recording border, resulting in hours of recorded footage becoming unusable. I mean, just check your... I get that is annoying. That would be annoying, but, like, it's on you to double-check that shit when you're doing it. Yeah. But, like, don't let that shit slide when you're I would like to... to point out that was, like, fixed three days after launch, maybe four. Oh, good. So, why is this That's even fixed in... now. Why is that even in his review? 
I don't know. There's no way to disable tutorials and reminders. Now, I'm not against tutorials. Some things need to be explained. But tutorial prompts which freeze the... This is another one we... I don't know if this made it onto Nier's fucking Mayo Bingo card. Let me actually detour to that real quick, because that's funny. The Mayo Bingo card is Hang blessed. on, guys. Where is this shit? Where, where? Where's the bingo card? Here. I don't know if it made it on here, but this is something that could have, if not... Because he's very bipolar when it comes to tutorials in video games. But yes, Nier made a fucking Mayo Bingo card. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Mayo continues to be bipolar about tutorials in video games. He either hates them or loves them. And it doesn't matter if they're spammed in his face or not, because it just depends on how they're spammed in his face, I guess. Because he wants the game to hold his hand. I know that. He hates it when a game doesn't do that. Come on, I'd love to see someone debate Mayo on some of the games he talks about. Eh, maybe. I don't really think it would go anywhere, though. Because I think he's still just going to keep doing what the fuck he's doing regardless. Debate Mayo for oh, Cloud. Oh, man. I mean, I could for Cloud, if nothing else. Debate Mayo for Cloud. I'll join in. I'll just say, get rid of the Mayo jar. Fuck just, it. Just stop. Just get out of the jar. Just, just Mayo, drown yourself in a you, jar. Why are you Mayo. rotting, Mayo? <laughs> Taking away from Sean's law debate with Krillix, imagine if he debated Mayo. Wait, Sean? Fucking Oh no, imagine if Krillix debated Mayo is what I believe you're saying. No, I think he's saying Sean because Sean had a Sean was like oh. really big for critiquing Mayo back then. And I don't think Krillix you know, Krillix hasn't done like any Mayo videos. For sure, he's saying Sean, which, yeah, taking away from that Krillix debate with Sean. Imagine if Sean debated Mayo. That would have been fucking awful, my guy. That would have been stupid. That would have went nowhere. Dude, I had a bad feeling about Sean back during his fucking whole Griffin videos. And, like, Griffin Vanguard shit. That whole situation. I just had a bad feeling about him. Not necessarily, like, the lolly stuff, just the way he fucking handles everything. Seems like a bitter asshole. Wait, was Sean the legend the one who defended Lolly? Yes. Yes, yes. he's the one who defended the Lolly. I have a video on him. He likes anime children. I have a video on him that's got one of my lowest like to dislike ratios because the Lolly cons were not happy with me. You liked him? Rip. I never did. I always had a bad feeling about him. Sean likes anime children. Yes the gameplay will appear later in the game long after they've told you basic stuff like how to climb a pipe by pressing jump something you literally couldn't be at this point without having already learned because you've climbed a pipe before this hours into the game they remind you that you can use your dash after a jump when they've all i mean you literally said you wanted sifu to repeat tutorials for you because you thought they didn't do a good job of telling you the tutorials in the fucking tutorial section of the game but then when this game actually repeats amusing. tutorials, it's bad. I find it more amusing. He has his grips with the Tomic card. You see that axe he's holding? Mm-hmm. That's a special deluxe pre-order edition. Oh, okay. So what about that? What, Mayo, why do you pre-order games nowadays? Come on, Bell. Come on. I mean, yeah, that is an L, but, like, do you get, like, any actual benefit from pre-ordering the game? No, it's but it's another $40! Why did you spend that? That's my question! Why would you spend that? It's another 35 to 40 right there for that one axe. Oh my god, that's so dumb. That's why I was confused. Like, it's not like a gripe, I'm just like, more like, why did you pre-order this for that? You know, I realized... They literally said they weren't going to give you anything, like, special, you know? I realized that Mayo seems to say things are arbitrary every time the thing he talks doesn't interact with the game in ways he cares about, pretty much. If it doesn't do what he wants it to do, then he fucking bitches about it wanting to be it something... Wanting... He bitches about wanting it to be something else, or just saying that it doesn't work. Oh no, don't get me wrong, Devshot. I do love supporting devs, but I don't support pre-ordering, like, massive games anymore. I After usually... All, they could drop and be awful. I usually never pre-order games to begin with, so... Exactly already told you about this and you've been doing it plenty 
Look at this tutorial interrupting me mid-jump to remind me that I can dash in the air, when that's exactly what I'm fucking doing. It's really bizarre that they even need to tell you that in the first place. If someone can't figure that out on their own, there's no way in hell they're gonna figure out some of the later puzzles. I mean, bro, you literally bitched about basic mechanics not being explained in Sifu. Where's that same energy? It's bad when it's explained. It's bad when it's not explained. Where's the compromise? He's just bipolar with tutorials. That's what I'm saying. He does that multiple times in his Alien Iso video. What specifically? What is- I don't- I don't know what you're referring to specifically. Unless you're- like, the whole point I made just a minute ago. About- because, yeah, he- yeah. I think that's what you mean, actually, because yeah, he compared it a lot to Prey, so... <laughs> they constantly remind you of stuff you already know. Literally, every time you enter the liquid polymer, there's a prompt saying to press the shift key to get out. And yeah, maybe that's a small detail, but after 20 hours, I feel kind of insulted. Just like how every time I'm about to die, the game tells me to press X to heal myself. I know! Why don't you put a little boy in here to follow me around yelling at me to heal while you're at it? Oh my god, dude, stop comparing it to another game. Why? Why are you making this? <laughs> Why? No one liked your God of War review anyway. Atomic Heart also has crashing issues, for me at least. I haven't had a game crash on me in ages, but Atomic Heart sure does like to crash in the worst possible moments. I have gotten stuck on- Did you have any issues with it crashing? I think I crashed on Reject once or twice. But yeah. Some guy? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, I thought maybe you died. <laughs> Because, yeah, no, I don't think I had... I don't remember Reject really having that many issues with the game crashing. I uh, didn't really have much experience with that either. So maybe this is just your PC. <laughs> or his, rather. Yeah. I think I should have... I think I might have to call it your psycho. Well, if you gotta, if you got to call it here, I'll try and... Yeah, I'm to well, call it here. Let me see. How long have we been going for, if I can keep going? An hour, um, 113 minutes. And it says almost two hours on OBS. Uh, yep. Well, I'll let you see yourself up for now. I'll see if I can stretch this on. It's alright, Seko. I just gotta get out of here. Ah, uh, you're fine. Thank I you, appreciate, everyone. I appreciate you coming on and helping me break down the first one. That was the main no one, problem, Mr. Pang, fella. so... You have a good one, homie. No thanks, problem. You thanks, some guy, for coming company. on. See hey, you, everyone. Have a good one. And then there was just me. I'll see how long I can, uh, I can push through this. I don't know. I know I watched Reject play this for quite a bit, but I didn't play the game, so I will try to push this, push through this a little further. Geometry several times, on a table or a chair, even on the stairs. I get stuck and I can't move and I die. <laughs> As I just said, the game starts. So he gets stuck on a lot of shit like he did earlier, I don't <laughs> Well, well, the B-roll he showed earlier at the beginning of this was really bad for it. He was just sitting there taking it. He was just taking a fucking beating. We're at 451. It was, like, right here. ...moment-to-moment -moment -moment gameplay. Yeah, it's like, Focused, what the what, frequently what, 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 frustrating <laughs> and lacking in compelling moment-to-moment... -moment. So, yeah, no, I, I don't know if I want to really take your word on that one, buddy. That's... what the fuck? ...starts quite slow, but you know what? I didn't mind it. The game Atomic Heart reminds me of the most... Hello, Psycho. Hey, Maurice. How you doing? That's the type of things I've seen in Doom Eternal. Look at some speedrunning videos and the game gets jank as fuck. It depends. It, I guess it honestly depends. Prey also starts slow. Take a shot every time I mention Prey in this video. Please, please don't. You will die. You will fucking die. Anytime, why are you doing this? Why are we comparing it to Prey? I don't always hate a slow intro. I tried to get in the mood, listen to conversations. I walked around the city listening to the NPCs tell their stories, talk about politics. Don't care. Pray at the memorial. Praise open. Oh, it's alright. I'm gonna stop by the time that counter hits 10. The area has a history room where you can go panel to panel and read about the alternate history timeline that led humanity to this point. Atomic Heart does the exact same thing. We read about the Soviet Union's emergence from victory in World War II, and the invention of polymer and surrounding technology that led to them becoming an advanced society built on robotics. It's really cool. So yes, this is the lore of the game. So what is... It, I understand you're trying to make a point that you took your time with some of this shit. What does this have to do with it being, like... 
Hmm. I don't know. I just feel like he's holding up on this a little more than he needs to. I'm gonna go now. Bye bye. All right, Deathshot. Appreciate you stopping in. I enjoyed looking around and learning about the world. The opening parade section really blew me away. It's not just artistically impressive, but technically impressive. And it was all running smoothly. The game doesn't run perfectly, but for the most part, I rarely dip below 60 FPS, except for a few cinematics and transition okay. moments. I enjoyed the cutscenes so much to okay. dislike the protagonist. He is, without a doubt, the most irritating person I've ever listened to. He uses invented swear words. Okay, now I don't know if I'm going to say he's the most irritating person, but I'm not going to entirely disagree with him from everything I've heard about this game. <laughs> Some of the shit this guy says, especially a lot of his quotes, are just retarded. What's the similarities between this and Prey? What? I don't get it either. And we've already got five on the counter. I'm going to... I'm just... I'm... <laughs> The second that counter starts ticking up again, I'm gonna have issues. ...words, makes annoying comments complaining about his video game emissions, jokes around and thinks he's the most awesome person in the world. Top it off with him having conversations with his annoying AI partner, and you've got a recipe for disaster. Ugh. Supply room's locked. Well, that's just fucking great. I can't just snap my fingers here. I need a key. And let me guess. I don't care. How dense do you think you can make things easier by getting off my grill? Like I said, I'm not entirely disagreeing with him about this I shit. I ignored so. the rest. Add the dialogue at the bottom during story sequences or mission explanations, and I ignored the rest. It didn't lead to me being lost in what to do, and I highly recommend it because it makes the game so much more tolerable. That's an interesting word. Tolerable. Because we gotta get to the gameplay. The combat, the exploration, all that. It's tolerable. Walking around. I don't know. It looked actually pretty fun to me when I was watching Reject play this game. It didn't look bad at all. I. Why is it only just tolerable? Crispy critters, exactly. I love those crispy critters, guys. I used to enjoy Mayo for his Doom content, but when I came across your vid on his Sifu videos and Nier's vid on his style meter analysis, I thought, holy fuck, this guy is dull. Yeah, he's. He's not bad when it comes to Doom, and sometimes he makes good points, but he often contradicts himself or just doesn't really understand what a game's trying to do and then misjudges it. Bro really said get off my grill without laughing. Yeah, it, like I said, the fucking dude's... The protagonist's dialogue in this is pretty corny. Undiluting, opening locks, it's okay. Occasional boss fights or big challenging combat rooms, pretty good sometimes. Moment to moment combat, which makes up most of the game, pretty bad. You start with a melee weapon and- I've seen it. It looked pretty fun. The moment to moment combat honestly wanted to make me get this game the most. It- I've seen Reject play this shit going up against swarms of drones and it's just goddamn, it looked fun. Axe with a chargeable secondary attack. You beat up robot guys with mustaches, they have a charge attack that you avoid by backdashing, and that's the only enemy you'll be fighting for a while, unless you count these little drones. Your movement is incredible. Why wouldn't you count the little drones? I, I've seen what they can do. They do actually attack you. Shit. The fuck? I, uh... Ah... <sighs> Yeah, I'm honestly gonna have to play this game before I can judge this video more. I am not fucking sitting through this full goddamn thing right now. Is there any other dumb shit you have? Please, Let me no. ask you a Please, don't ask me the question. I hate your question. I've not played Mortal Kombat. This one, maybe, because I was a fan of the original Amnesia, but I didn't play the shit and I find it funny that he calls it alien isolation but good I think we watched this in BC once with Michael if I remember correctly I do want to get Michael on sometime to uh, to cover his fucking system shock one maybe if we have time we'll look at that one too how long have we been going for though yeah it's just literally just over two hours honestly I got most of what I wanted to do here. I definitely was going to sit through that whole fucking, uh... The whole fucking other video. It's 27 minutes. 
I'm definitely not sitting through that shit right now. But if there's anything else you guys can think of to watch, I'll try to. Honestly, it's hilarious that Nier made a bingo card for Mayo. Can we expect a Mayo drinking game? Well, he gave us one in the last video. Drink every time he mentions Prey. We've came up with some Mayo drinking games before, too. Or, like, you can. It's not hard. System Shock? I'm not doing System Shock on my own. That would be one best, far better for if I could get Michael on. And I don't think Michael's available right now. I would like to stick to just Mayo for the stream, to be fair, or Breach. If there's any other, like, short video videos we can think of. I just don't know of any right now. I don't know much about Resident Evil 4 either. I know he had this video on his Sifu. Fucking bullshit. The Sifu update finally made me stop complaining. That was dumb. I only find that one dumb because, like, it took him pretty much over a year to actually be okay with the state of the game, but he still called it his game of the year from the year before. Have you guys ever showed you that? Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a sec. Um, I gotta go find that sound clip real quick. I gotta find the sound clip. Where is it? I got this randomly when I was on uh, one of Mayo's streams. And I gotta launch SoundPad. No, not I suck at parries. <laughs> it's not that one. I got this when I was at one of Mayo's streams because I was making fun of him for calling Sifu his game of the year. He was streaming Sifu over on Twitch. If I can find it. on, I know it's here somewhere. Where is it? Where the fuck is it? Come on. Here it is. Yeah, let me make sure that this is actually loud enough when I play it. Bring OBS up as well. Give me the ear, by the way. Master Chief, do, do you have an issue with me saying that this is my game of the year? I'm sorry if that was really loud or really quiet, but yeah, that... <laughs> he, he was getting pissy at me for making fun of him. <laughs> In his chat for calling Sifu his game of the year. I thought that shit was hilarious. I still have it on my fucking sound pad. I don't really use it much, it's just fun to fucking remember. How about every time Mayo complains about the camera, take a shot? That could work. Is it... Is it I love that clip? I... I don't know what you're asking, uh. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, never mind. I see your first message now. I'm just dumb. Yeah, it was the Master Chief one, yes. But, I think I am gonna end the stream there, y'all. It was, uh, it was pretty fun having some guy on earlier. Again, big ups to him for coming on and dissecting, uh, dissecting the Trepang video with me. Shame he couldn't stay a little longer for the Atomic Heart one, but I definitely wasn't gonna sit through the full video anyway, so. I think two hours is strong enough for tonight. It wasn't supposed to be me sitting here for five or six hours anyway. See you, Shmi? I'll see you, Shmi. I'll probably hop on sometime after stream. See you guys. Appreciate everyone coming on. I don't know when I'm going to stream next. I know I'm going to try and get a video out at some point soon about the scythe situation, so expect that to be, like, one of my next videos. Uh, but yeah, with that, don't forget to come back, y'all, for more quality therapy. And I'll catch y'all next time. Have a good night, guys. And peace out.